Yeah, I got your picture right here, kiddo. Boom! Straight between the eyes. Boogie is so fake, man. He's so fing fake. Like, everything about him is false. He's lost a lot of relevancy in recent years, and his bank account is looking rather empty these days. Oh, uh oh. You could easily do this about Boogie and make it funny, but he's made it cringe. He knows. He fing knows the tipster law. Tipster. Glad to see you stop defending Bosch and his lollip and horse fantasies long enough to type this. Dude, this is the ultimate sides cucked shit from Tipster. It is unreal, the level of sides cuckery that he's engaging in right now. One person who I think is, I would define as a grifter getting involved. So you've got people like Matt Walsh who are getting involved for a political reason. So they want to talk about this because it suits their politics. They could put out a video about it um, and they can maybe have some future content in regards to this that, that maybe benefits their politics down the line, right? But Boogie, Boogie is someone who I think is grifting on this too and people have fallen for it because they're retards. But first of all, let's have a quick look at this so I can grab an energy drink. Just so you know, we've, we've called the cops. I need so. to ask you something. All right, well, I'm sorry. That's not how it's going to happen. So. Why aren't you a YouTuber? Uh, yeah, that's why I'm not answering the door, man. Well, can you get a picture real quick? People are crazy these days. People are wild these days. That's why we've, uh, when I called the cops. But if you, you have a question, I'll, I'll, I'll hear it out. What do, you, what do you got? Can you just get a picture? Wait, what? Can we at least get a picture? Hey, friend. Um, just so you know, we've, we've called the cops. <laughs> Here's a picture. Here's a picture for you, kids. <laughs> yeah, I got your picture right here, kiddo. Boom! <laughs> Straight between the eyes. Well, I don't know what I should do since my parents just left. Well, why did they drop you off, man? I don't know. All right, well, I'll tell you what, the cops will be here in a minute, and you can explain that to them, and they can maybe help you get a ride home or something, okay? Well, maybe could you come out here and give me a ride? No, I'm afraid that can't happen, friend. Or can we at least get yeah, a good selfie day, though, real man. quick, please? No, I apologize because of all the harassment we've received lately. I can't risk that. Dude, Frank Hassel got boogie shook, hadn't he? All right, man. You have a good day, brother. <laughs> hey, can you add me on Instagram, don't you? I wonder if Frank Hassel's around the corner, ready to go. Man, Frank Hassel. Dude. Frank Hassel is just... The fact that he stood there and called Boogie a pussy while he pointed a gun at him is one of the most insane moments in internet history. It was like the ultimate ballsy shit. And uh, it's probably one of the funniest things that's happened on the internet, I'd say. Crazy. He's like, yeah, you fucking... I think he called him a slur. So you're going to shoot me? Yes, Frank Hassel is unhinged, but he's funny. <clears throat> what have I told you guys? If you're funny, you can always get away with a lot more. Not really. Okay, well. I guess we've got a difference of opinion on that then, haven't we? Okay, so Boogie put our hot take that got everyone talking, okay? Hot take. Video games are supposed to be fun not lectures about why being a white man is bad, right? Now, what you need to understand about Boogie is this is obvious engagement bait that is designed to get people talking on Twitter. And no doubt, <clears throat> this is then going to be farmed by Keemstar on the next LolCal podcast, okay? You can kind of see the dynamic at play already with this stuff because it's happened before. Boogie throws some shit at the wall. 
Some of it sticks because it causes a big stink. And then it gets farmed on the Low Carb Podcast. Okay, there we go. That's the fucking cycle that you can... That, that is Boogie's entire life now, right? No, the Low Carb Podcast didn't stop. Wings did legitimately get bothered by the fact that everyone was calling him a full-blown pedo. But then Keemstar managed to twist it round and get it so that he didn't leave the show. Based drama farmer Keemstar actually managed to turn it round. And uh, it's still going. He's still managing to keep it going. Um Keemstar, well, it's, it's, it's not, I wouldn't say, I don't think that Keemstar has said to Boogie, oh, Boogie, go and tweet out about Sweet Baby Inc. and cause a controversy. I think what's more likely is Keemstar said to Boogie and is advising him on how to kind of operate broadly. And then when something hits, that then gets capitalized on for the podcast, right? So I think that is the dynamic at play. And to, like, not to suck my own dick, okay? But it's like, it's it's quite obvious to anyone, okay? Anyone with more than two brain cells can rub it together, can rub them together to see that this is a dynamic that's at play. And it's not it's not fake. Like, I think Boogie is is putting this out there, not at the behest of Keemstar, but the, the dynamic at which he operates at is at the behest of Keemstar. You know, put stuff out there. If something sticks, we'll bring it onto the podcast, right? So I wouldn't be surprised if the next episode was all about the the, the fuss that was caused over this. Because, look, this has got, like, this is, dude, it's such a difficult thing. Because it's like, you on Twitter, it, you can't criticize someone without drawing more attention to it. This has got 25 million impressions. That's fucking nuts, man. You know, this is this is so clearly worked in terms of stirring up a fuss and it's now been shared so much that it's been put onto 25.9 million times on a timeline. It's crazy how much fucking attention this has gotten. And I cannot move on Twitter if for not seeing a fucking reply, take, quote, tweet, or something in regards to this take, right? And it's quite a, it's quite a sort of me, me, media take. And the other thing as well is... <clears throat> not lex not lex about why being a white man is bad okay so the problem is is idiots in the reply are going name one game that does this and i think there probably are a couple of games that do this right but this isn't really what the problem is of like lectures about why being a white man is bad because that isn't really something that is that common in games where it's a lecture about why being a white man is bad it's more about things being forced things feeling being put in there, you know, for reasons that aren't just good writing. It's when DEI stuff is in there, it's done badly, like in Spider-Man 2, for example, right? It's too specific, exactly. But then obviously the retards are saying name a game like that, and there probably are a couple that have got themes or elements of that, right? <coughs> So obviously, Boogie is just trying to fucking farm attention from this, and it's worked. So well done, Boogie, as far as I'm concerned, okay? Um, but then another low cow gets involved, which we'll get to. But let's have a quick look at his video and see what he had to say. What well, slop gamers, has Boogie put out? Grab your Mountain Dew, lock and load your controllers. Gamergate 2 has officially begun and who's leading the clap back this time is it uh just some random neck beard on the internet like me no it's elon freaking musk and you might be asking who is elon squaring off against is it oh some yeah this Anita is true Sarkeesian type no it's homeland security oh my god man i did hear about this i did hear about this yeah i did see this yeah Name one, name just one game where the theme is white man bad. Done. What was funny about this is the the the, the criteria was name a game where white man bad, which I think Dev has done pretty handily here. Okay, but if you look in the replies, it changes from, it, and it's like, oh, but that's an indie game, or you know, oh, but no, actually that's good because it's about co um, colonialists and settlers. So it changed from name a game where the white man is bad. It was literally that it, it was quite literally the fucking it's not happening. But if it is happening, it's a good thing. 
It was quite literally that, right? In record time. Yes, Roland Stott knows. Hey, Roland Stott knows. Let's go, Roland Stott. This is right up your street, isn't it? I know. <clears throat> but yeah, there's undoubtedly games that have got these themes. But if you wanted to be a bit more specific, you can be. Because it probably is difficult to find a game that's that plainly just white man bad. I've not played this game, but yeah. Experience the frontier as a chief of a Native American tribe and resist the onset of settlers. Uh-oh. I'm going to break this video down into two parts. The first of which is to get people caught up to speed as to exactly what's happening and why it's happening. And secondly, as an old head who lived through the first Gamergate and in fact made quite a few mistakes during the first Gamergate, oh. I, uh, I, I want to talk about my opinion on what's probably going to happen here and what we should be doing. Now, all of this starts with a company that you probably never heard of known as Sweet Baby Incorporated, which in their own words is a narrative development and consultation studio based in Montreal and working around the globe. Their mission is to tell better, more empathetic stories while diversifying and enriching the video games industry. They aim to make more games more engaging, more fun, more meaningful, and more inclusive for everyone. Spoiler alert, they mostly failed to do so. Now right here on their website, you'll see a list of games that they have worked on. And this is important later, so take a big note. But you'll see that some of these games have been too big to fail. God of War Ragnarok, you know, sequel to the original God of War. Alan Wake 2, sequel to the original Alan Wake. Spider-Man 2, too big to fail. And some other games on here are some real stinkers, like uh, Suicide Squad, where they worked on the script writing, the banter, the cutscenes. I mean, Alan Wake 2, too big to fail. I mean, it's kind of wrong on two parts, in that Alan Wake 2 was, a, you know, a AAA game, right? But I don't know if it was, like, too big to fail. And also, it's not been profitable. It's not made a profit yet. <laughs> God of War Ragnarok. See, I've heard Mick... I've played Alan Wake 2 a bit now, and for me... The kind of, in fact, this is a good time to put this in here. So Alan Wake 2, there is some like language, some kind of like woke language that is quite eye rolling. Okay. It is like, oh my God. You know, it's very like, like when you talk to the black people and they're talking about it being just like Alabama and stuff like that in this town and some of the racial stuff and so on. And, you know, the saga person comes across <clears throat> as like a black Mary Sue type character. So there's definitely elements that I think are kind of eye rolling, um, but I don't think I don't think that it ruins the game. And then when you get to play as Alan Wake, it's fun. And now I'm into it further. I'm having more fun with it, basically, right? So I think you're doing yourself a disservice if you don't p play Alan Wake two because of the sweet baby ink stuff. God of War Ragnarok, obviously, I think it's quite beloved. I think that, you know, even someone like, say, I mean, Mauler, Mauler liked it, I think, and was critical of people that called it woke trash and shit, I believe. But I've also had other people say it's got a kind of weird racialized characters in they didn't like or something. So maybe it's a similar thing to Alan Wake 2, perhaps, where it's like there's some elements that are a bit annoying, but it doesn't ruin the game. Um, Suicide Squad was, I think, shit for other reasons. But I, I've not played it, but I think it was shit for other reasons other than the woke stuff. But the stuff that is the woke shit in there is cringe and gay. And some of the shit that I think they definitely had a hand in. Like there was a description of Wonder Woman written from the perspective of Lex Luthor. And it was like written like it was written by a feminist. It was fucking retarded. It's Lex Luthor for fuck's sake, you know? And Spider-Man 2 definitely has got some shitty things in that are annoying. In fact, didn't Nicholas tweet about this? Nicholas is getting involved in Gamergate 2 as well. Oh, it's about the boogie thing. Yeah. Boogie obviously tweeted about this because he wants attention. True. Why don't the Gamergate 2 people tweet about how American developer Insomniac literally invented gender non-conforming words in the Spanish? We spoke about this the other day. Me and Nicholas spoke about this the other day, didn't we? But yeah, stuff like this is fucking ridiculous. Here's something interesting for Latinos. Spider-Man 2 is inclusive language for those English speakers. Right. Primero quiero que conozcas al Dr. Young, una importante entomología. ¿Sabes qué es la entomología? Sí. El Dr. Young realiza una investigación genial con abejas. Primero... Right, can anyone that speaks this language tell me what the problem is? I don't understand.
All I hear is let's 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 do that. I'm behind you. I'm doing the salam panda panda salanto. I don't speak. I don't speak this language. Okay. Pero quiero que conozcas al doctor. He should have said L doctor, not L doctor. Oh, it replaces the feminine A with E for non-binary. Right, so, so this language is, is, is gendered, but they've tried to make it gender neutral. Oh, it maybe explains here. For the English speakers here, basically, what they did is this. Do you know Thux Doxter Young? Thux Doxter Young is an important endemologist. Right, got it, okay. Because they're upset our language is gendered and want us to force to change it so inclusive. Spanish is a gendered language and they are forcing inclusive language, which is forcing gen genderless language into it. The big majority of Spanish speakers reject it and Insomniac Games action pretty much means we don't care so you change because we say so. That's, that is pretty insane, no? So they're changing like the, the foundations of a language because it's gender gendered. And the thing to bear in mind with that is, yeah, this is this. Is, and remember, Sweet Baby Inc. worked on this game and they were supposed to help with inclusivity. But they've they've butchered the Spanish language. In this instance, at least. Right. Pretty crazy. Does it mean that you shouldn't play Spider-Man 2? Well, no, you should still play it if you want. But if you want to avoid that kind of shit, it's not unreasonable that someone's going to go, well, the company that did that thing that you don't like, they also worked on this game. So be be educated that you might find that stuff. And if you don't want it, maybe don't buy it or buy it when it's on discount. That's it. That's all this is. And it's become this big fucking Gamergate 2 shit because these game journos are little soy freaks that can't help themselves but apologize for the retarded actions of the powers that work for these companies. And other things. You know, the things that made Suicide Squad utterly fail. Meanwhile, over here on Steam, you'll see these curation pages where people can curate lists of games based on all kinds of different things, whether or not they recommend them or don't recommend them, the type of game they are, the type of DRM they use. And, and this user decided to create a list of games based on games that Sweet Baby Incorporated had worked on. That way, you know, if you've had a good experience with this company in the past, you could play that game based on that recommendation. And if you've had a bad experience in the past, you can choose to avoid that game. And this is just here to inform the consumer. Well, eventually the Steam group caught the attention of Chris Kindred, who works for Sweet Baby Incorporated. And Chris tweeted out saying that there was a harassment group uh, dedicated to harassing Sweet Baby Incorporated, and that it obviously doesn't adhere to Steam's policies and code of conduct. And she encouraged people to report, report the hell out of the group in the hopes that it would get taken down. And while you're at it, why don't you report this guy, the guy who created this consumer advocacy list, uh, report his account that he spent all his time and all this money on to see if you can get that taken away from him as well. And again, because he was con informing consumers. Now, you remember earlier when we were taking a look at the Sweet Baby website, uh, I pointed out that they list the games that they have worked on right on their website. So if they're doing that themselves, are they harassing themselves? How could it possibly be harassment to copy paste this list of Dude. games that they've posted themselves Dude, Boogie is so annoying, man. He's got like the most basic default cookie cutter fucking over takes on, on this shit. That it's nonsensical, and it's definitely not worth somebody losing their Steam account over. Now, obviously, gamers didn't like that, uh, but you know who else didn't? Twitter. Uh, Twitter fed Chris a six-day ban for targeted harassment. The thing that Chris was actually doing, the thing that you know she was accusing others of doing, and decided to do herself. Meanwhile, we have Lego Butts, who I presume you remember He's from right. the first Gamer Game right. around for it. Pointing out that Steam doesn't, you know, hey, force people to... Who knows Lego Butts? I know who Lego Butts is because I was looking into some of this stuff off stream as well. Yo, Lego Butts. And also, this is a great example of the Streisand effect. Because if you look here, at the time, this has got okay, 9,263 so followers. After press people. Is now it's got over 200,000. Don't care, I have to deliver this trans couple's HRT supply. HRT time, musical note, da 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 da, da musical note. Spidey, thank you for the 333.
prove that a game has been worked on by Sweet Baby Incorporated, and that might be why it should get taken down. This got community noted by the fact that, number one, Lego Butts works for Sweet Baby Incorporated and probably shouldn't be trusted on this particular topic. And then secondly, the curator literally uses that games list that they have on their website that I showed you early to, you know, prove that these are the games they've worked on. And allow me to interject some editorial here. Why are these guys afraid of people? Wait. Remember when Anita Sarkeesian lectured him about his white man privilege in the day and he apologised and grovelled? I think he gets into it here, I would hope. He also told Turkey Tom that misgendering should be illegal. No way, man. That's crazy. <laughs> really? So he cucked to Gamergate back in the day. People listing the games they've worked on to begin with. If you've done good work and you're proud of the work you've done, someone listing all the games you've worked on should be doing you a favour, right? Unless, of course, you know the work you're putting in is bad and it's ruined some of the games that could have been better, then you probably don't want people curating that list. I think they know what they're doing. No, listen, right? I th the forced woke shit is, is, for me, only in as far as there's stuff that's included that is solely for that reason. But that doesn't, it's for me, I don't, th I don't think it ruins Spider-Man 2. I think you can play Spider-Man 2 and enjoy the game. But that sort of stuff is just, it's just annoying and cringe. And it isn't done for the right reasons. Now, due to the Streisand effect, all of this caused that curator list to bloom over 100K, now 250K people on that list supporting this cause. And as people dug around, they found this, the co-founder of Sweet Baby Incorporated, basically saying that they bully people into putting this type of stuff in their games. Here, I'll let her speak for herself. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher-ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, what is woke about that mission? Okay, I feel like you're, you're doing the thing where you're acting like, oh, what, what do you mean, Chud? I feel like I've explained it very well at this stage, okay? I don't think I need to explain it any further. I think most people get what I'm saying. I'm getting one guy. Go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. I don't think it's ever a good look to say that your company is based on wielding cancel culture to get big companies to pay you. But if at least you're providing a valuable service, I guess that might be at least conceivable. But if you wonder what kind of service Sweet Baby Incorporated is, is trying to provide, well, look at these tweets from Felix that we spoke about earlier. Pay me to shoot down your Thank white you, male Spitfire. lead game ideas. I had a nightmare that I was a white male gamer. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty abundantly clear that they're not. Oh my God, the old Lego butts tweets. This is mental. He's going deep. But uh, they're not there to add diversity to games. They're there to push white people and white males out. It was like a then big old, old polycule. Media stepping in. Uh, this is game developer, a uh, writer by the name of Brian Francis, who says, Steam and Discord are being used as a home base for hateful reactionaries to single out and harass game developers. Why are Valve and Discord permitting harassment against Sweet Baby Incorporated? And again, the harassment Brian is so upset about is that someone copy and pasted from the Sweet Baby Incorporated website the list of games they've worked on so that you can make an informed decision whether or not you want to support the games that they've worked on. I mean, I guess in Brian's article, he does point out that at one point there was a forum on that curation group where a lot of people, a handful of bad actors, said some crazy shit, but the curator just got rid of those forums. So there's nothing that could possibly be harassment on that page, right? It's just a list of games. But here's where things get entirely off the rails. Uh, this group named oh, Take fuck. This, which, after getting looked into, found out they were being funded by Homeland Security here in the United States. Posted an article. Okay, okay, that's a pretty big claim. What the fuck is that about? Funded by Homeland Security? What the fuck is that about? Is that literal glowy shit? Am I, how is this fucking, this sounds nuts. <laughs> called responding to Gamergate 2, saying Gamergate 2 is the latest targeting harassment campaign within the games industry, and it's aimed at Sweet Baby Incorporated, and that all scholars and journalists and game developers must do everything they can to shut down Gamergate 2 and denounce the gamers okay, who don't want to buy games that have been worked on by this company. So there's your smoking gun. The Department of Homeland Security funding an organization that just fired the warning shot that Gamergate 2 is coming, and we need to make sure that every gamer knows they have to buy the games worked on by Sweet Baby Incorporated or else they're the bad guys. Am I taking crazy pills? You can't even blame the gamers this time. Okay. <laughs> what 
What, why can't there just be a measured conversation about this, man? Why does it have to be re re pure retardation? Why can't it just be, hey, some of these things they're putting in are a bit cringe. Let's talk about that, no? It has to be this fucking crusade. And oh no, they're, tr they're trying to get us to buy the games with the blacks in. Like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's, it's all my security! Holy shit! Now, of course, we saw the old guard from the first Gamergate dust off their pitchforks. We saw Mark Kern, you know, the guy who worked at Blizzard there, Grums, on Twitter. Here in this interview with the quartering, he went on to explain that basically the... No, 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 it's not just Boogie, though. It's not just Boogie. Some people have taken it to... Somebody have taken it to insane degrees. I know, oh, it's just the internet and stuff. Yeah, sure, but I will say it anyway. It's fucking retarded to... Like, because by the same token, shutting that Sweet Baby Inc. detected thing down is obviously, like, retarded, and you shouldn't call for mass reporting of that. But on the other side, it was a list of 16 games. You know, I, the idea that it is overwhelming, it is an overwhelming issue that cannot be stopped. Like, I just, I just don't think that that's true. I think there's some shit that's happening in games that's annoying and shitty, and it's fine to be critical of that. But can we not turn it into this big fucking crusade? Like, it is literally like June. It is just like fucking June. You know, you want to act like the Fremen need to rise up and commit a, a fucking universal jihad to the death of 61 billion ga um, games journalists or something. It's like, just chill out a little bit, okay? You know? Fuck it out. Lisan Al Gaib, let's go. The way the games are getting made is they're extremely expensive. Huge companies have to come up with the money, and one of the best ways to come up with the money is your CEFO can get you tax breaks based on working with companies that do this forced diversity stuff to make sure you can fund your game. And oh, by the way, you remember I mentioned Elon Musk? Well, this is where Elon Musk signal boosted this by retweeting it simply by saying, "Wow." And this got it in front of 5.4 million eyes. So we're off to the races officially with this tweet. Then you, you got logic people like L Matt Walsh tweet. chiming in and say what you will about Matt Walsh. But this is one take of the breakdown of, you know, quote, wokeness, end quote, in gaming. Uh, but this, this also got signal boosted by Elon Musk, this time to 17.8 million viewers. So there's now way more people involved. And Elon Musk says video games need to get rid of the woke BS. Getting lectured with tedious propaganda is not why people play games. Now for my opinions. I was around for the last Gamergate. And if you guys remember, I was a bit of a notorious fence sitter during that period of time. Oh, he's going to talk about his old thing. By the way, Matt Walsh doesn't give two fucks about video games. All he cares about is twisting the the good, the good, sort of nature of the discussion towards his own political fucking agenda and making content out of it. He, doesn't get, he fucking hates gamers. And the thing is, he is, the reason people have reacted so badly to him is he is this fucking, this, this rounds um, Milo Yiannopoulos. He is the same kind of guy who is before shit on gamers relentlessly and now wants to turn around and be like, oh yeah, and act like he cares about the cause. It's the same shit that Milo did back in the day. And so people are very resistant to people like that sniffing around and don't like it. I hated people being harassed online. I hated seeing people arguing online about the stuff. And I did feel like there was improvement the way that we as content creators and writers and gaming companies could do a better job of calling out corruption in the industry and improving the way that we reported video games. And I'll tell you where that got me. It got me utterly cucked by Anita Sarkeesian, chewed up by the left, and spit the fuck out. Uh-oh. I'm not going to make that mistake again. I like most sane people just like fun video games. I don't care if the protagonists or the supporting characters are short or tall, fat or skinny, black or white, gay or straight, uh, big tits, small tits, negative tits, three dicks, ten dicks. I don't give a shit. I just play video games to have fun. I'm just here to have fun. Please make a fun video game. I also think diversity can be fun. It doesn't have to take away or detract from the video game. Give me cool character creators with crazy shit in it. Give me wild main characters. Give me storylines of things I would never experience in my own life and let me experience them through somebody else's eyes. But it's gotta be done well and it's gotta be done fun. When I look at the list of games that Sweet Baby has worked on, I don't find any of the diverse storylines in Spider-Man 2 to be very fun or well done. And we all know what we thought about Suicide Squad, which was just an abomination from the ground up. I personally think that curator list is a good thing and I'm going to use it to make informed decisions moving forward. And as it stands right now, because of the behavior of the people that work at that company, plus their track record of the games they've worked on, I'm not inclined to buy anything from Sweet Baby Incorporated. Does that make me some white male uh, gamer uh, harasser or monster? Then put me on the guillotine list. I'll sign up right first. I'm ready to go. I've been ready to go since the first Gamergate. Put me, put me out of my misery. If you're around for the first Gamergate, you know 
the tools that you use, right? Welcome You've heard it all before. Chud everything Nation. is sexist. Everything Shut is racist. Everything Shut is racist. Thank you, Malcos. Call it all out. Shoot everything down. Thank if you, you don't for like the it, uh, sub. It's appreciate bad, it. And it must be taken away as long as you're somebody that works at Sweet Baby Incorporated. If you're a consumer like you or me and you want to have a fun video game, well, then you're the asshole. Oh, and don't forget, if you're a white male gamer, especially an older one like me, it doesn't matter how leftist you are. It doesn't matter how much you support diversity. It doesn't matter how good of an ally you are. You are dog shit on the bottom of these people's heels. Don't you ever forget it. If you choose not to buy them. I, Boogie is so fake, man. He's so fucking fake. Like, everything about him is false. Do you know what I mean? It's funny that people are getting mad about this. Because I'm like, how can you not tell he's just literally saying this shit for attention? It's obvious. He's got no, he's fucking flip-flops left, right, and center. Why would you get mad at this guy? He's just grifting you, you know? For shitty games, then you are the enemy. And if you inform other people about what games they've worked on, you might very well find your Steam account gone when you wake up in the morning. That's who you're up against. And I think it should be abundantly clear this is not another harassment campaign. And you, or nobody, should be harassing anybody. We've shown in this video that if you give these people enough time and enough time to speak and a platform to do it on, they'll self-destruct on their own. You don't have to do anything but wait. Though I do recommend, if you're somebody who works for this? the money and has it in their pocket and only wants to spend it on fun video okay, games instead bit. of the games that these people have made, well, I think that's probably the right thing to do as well. Even though they'll probably still call that harassment. At the end of the day, I set the last one out and uh, I felt like I was on the wrong side of history there. And uh, it certainly didn't serve me well. So gamers, uh, I, I've been granted a do-over here. I don't know why Homeland Security has decided that they are going to give me a chance to right this particular ship, but I'm going to take it. And I'm going to make oh sure God. that I'm on the right side of fun video games and fun, well-written diversity and nowhere else. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. I love you very much. And I'll speak with you again. It's so just, it's just, everything he says is so fake and so transparently, you know. Oh, here we go. Oh, fucking hell. What's this? Uh-oh. Someone wants to stick up for Boogie, it seems. Yeah, it's like, oh, this is the, you know, this is the right way to go. Not like this is what I believe or I thought, you know, it's just so shallow. Keemstar's coached Boogie into being more provocative on social media, being more ballsy, okay? And then when he's doing something ballsy and that's getting attention, I think Keemstar is reaping the reward of the drama crop, right? And there's nothing wrong with that, to be clear, okay? Whatever, you do you, okay? I'm cool, I'm cool with fucking that sort of thing. Um, but like, it's just funny to me then that people are getting so upset <laughs> with this because you just, you or like, this is the beauty sometimes of social media is, you know, like the super mega thing for me, for example, lots of people were upset with me because of the super mega video that I made. And that video got like tons of views, way beyond what it would have done if it wasn't for the fucking anger over it, you know? And that was purely an organic thing. I didn't think that was gonna blow up in the way that it did. I just gave my kind of honest takes on the situation and then, you know, it became a big fucking drama onwards from there, you know? Um, and it's the same, I guess the same sort of thing here. It's just, you know, there's a bit more of a process, I think, because they've got this podcast. There's a third party in Keemstar that's coming along and fucking, you're navigating it that way. But yeah. <clears throat> anyway. So now we've got a little bit more clarity on that. Okay. This is going to make the next part all the more sweeter, I would argue. Okay. Because. <laughs> Guess who weighed in on this? Well, you know already because it's in the title. Dude, I'm so, I do not want to become like Nicholas DiOrio. Okay. I am not becoming Nicholas DiOrio. I promise. It's just funny and kind of relevant. All right. <laughs> Dude, Timster did a fucking effort post about this whole thing. Jesus Christ. Look how many. Look at this. This got a bunch of engagement as well. Dude, this is crazy. I need to pick a side more, clearly. Well, I am more on the gate, the Gamer Gate 2 side, but. Gee, I need to get some more takes out about this shit. I need to get in on this action. Bro, what the fuck? So Tipster said, Boogie2988 becoming a The Quartering ripoff wasn't on my 2024 bingo card. 
but it should have been. He's lost a lot of relevancy in recent years, and his bank account is looking rather empty these days. Oh, uh-oh. Yo, Chod, Chod copying URR, that is a slanderous lie. Nicholas got the idea for URR for me. Retract your lies immediately. And being the lovable Mr. Rogers character of the internet wasn't working anymore because people got a chance to see behind the current and get a good look at what the real Boogie 298 looks like. And surprise, surprise, they didn't like it. <laughs> Why would you essay post about this? Like, I just don't get it, man. Like, it's just so crazy. I mean, well, I guess the proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding, guys. You know, there's your reason. But it just seems so excessive. I don't know. That's my view on it. Doing a big essay post about Boogie talking about fucking Gamergate 2. <laughs> Not to mention the fact that the anti-woke grift is extremely profitable. And I can imagine seeing folks like the quartering and Melanie Mack. Oh, Melanie Mack's that butter-eating woman. The butter-eating woman that talks about the anti-woke stuff. Um, raking mountains of cash on that grift looks rather appealing to a has-been with a career on life support whose only current claim to fame is being the co-host of a podcast hosted by Keemstar, where you were literally there for the purpose of being mocked by everyone on the internet for being a low cow. I mean, the thing is, right? Tips to win. Yeah, in terms of pointing out the fact that Boogie's a loser. It's like... <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Like, pointing out Boogie's a loser is fine, okay? There's nothing, like, wrong with calling Boogie a loser. It's just kind of, like... A bit obvious, no? And that's another good point as well, Don BJ. All he's doing is insulting him. He doesn't say anything about what he said. Yeah, that is a fair point too. He's not really addressing his arguments, is he? He's just fucking having a pop at him, which is kind of gay. Yeah, exact critical shotgun nose. Bit of the pot calling the kettle black. Yeah, he's siding with the bad guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit cringe. But hey, anything for a quick buck and a taste of clout, eh, Boogie? Even if it means siding with some of the worst people on the internet. <laughs> Your friends with Teffles, bro. What are you on about? Oh my god, this is so cringe. Glad to know that, it, that all the kind words and encouraging messages you've tried to deliver in your videos in the past didn't mean shit and it was all just a facade to try and convince everyone you're somehow the good guy of the internet. I hope for your sake that the grift is worth it, Boogie. Dude, what is these clips anyway? I was around for the last Gamergate. And if you guys remember, I was a bit of a notorious fence sitter during that period of time. I hated people being harassed online. I hated seeing people arguing online about this stuff. And I did feel like there was improvement the way that we as content creators and writers and gaming companies could do a better job of calling out corruption in the industry and improving the way that we reported video games. And I'll tell you where that got me. It got me utterly cucked by Anita Sarkeesian, chewed up by the left and spit the fuck out. I'm not gonna make that mistake again. Well, at the end of the day, I set the last one out, and uh, I felt like I was on the wrong side of history there. And uh, it certainly didn't serve me well. So, gamers, uh, I, I've been granted a do-over here. At the end of the day, I set the last one out. I, to me, I'm just like, okay, like, are those the clips you're really going to choose where he's just talking a bit about his experience? Hey, low cow trading card game. How's it going? I've seen your work. Very good. Very good stuff. But um, but yeah, I mean, I just think to me, like the problem with the Boogie's video there wasn't him. I mean, I, I think this is probably true. And apparently it is true that he got shit on by Anita Sarkeesian or whatever. OK, so I'm, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, there's probably some truth in that. It was the kind of fact that he's just stating the very obvious perspectives on it. 
in a way that people have already done in a kind of shitter way. That was my kind of perspective on it. Um, <clears throat> but like this effort post about it is so cringe. Like, and then at the end, it's so dramatic as well. I hope for your sake that the grift is worth it, Boogie. Like, bro, chill out. It's not that deep. You're getting so hit up about a thing I was that around is designed for the last Gamergate. to, you know. I was around for the last dude. What the fuck? And if you, I was bro, around. What? For... You guys, remember I was a bit of an. Okay, there we go. It's just so excessive. It's so extra. That's it. That's the word. Tippy's being a bit extra here, I would argue. He's been a little bit extra, I think. And they, yeah, also, yeah, Don B. J's right here too. Now that he has a political opinion I disagree with, I've realized he's an evil person and every instance of kindness in the past was only a facade to enable future abuse. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry, critical. I've got it. I've got it. Tipster points out that clips that are the most true and likely the most sincere. Yes, exactly, Tommy. That's what I was getting at, right? Him talking about getting shit on by Anita Sarkeesian, that probably happened and he probably feels shit about it, right? It's like the worst clips that you could pick from the video. Whereas you could pick clips of him just saying the correct take on the Gamergate 2 stuff like everyone else has and, and maybe pointing that out. But no, he picked points to the clips which are probably the most sincere out of the lot. Because he probably did have that happen and probably Notorious does feel Finster shitty about it. Period of time. Okay. I hated... I don't know why that's happening. So, guys, you're saying about this uh, thing. Don't worry. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got the clip. Dude. So this is uh, Tipster's little joke. Tips did a little joke, guys. <laughs> well, look, I've not watched it yet. I've saved it for stream for you. So, let's see, okay? <laughs> hey, guys, it's me, Francis. And, you know, last time this Gamergate thing happened all those years ago, I feel like I was on the wrong side of history. I was just kind of a, a bit of a fence-sitter last time. And so this time, I want to make sure I'm on the right side of history. You know, last time that big meanie Anita Sarkeesian was so mean to me at VidCon, and I didn't like that very much. So this time, I'm going to side with all the racists and the Nazis and stuff like oh. that because they seem to think I'm a really cool guy and they see that's the problem with the lefty shit it's too it's just there's too much of a political bent with it it's too overall and political to make these kind of points with it you know do you see what I mean it's like this could be funny you could easily do this about Boogie and make it funny but he's made it cringe I seem to be on the right side of this thing this time, and like I said, I want to be on the right side of history uh, this time around. You know, there was that infamous stream clip of me saying that, you know, at least, you know, racists and Nazis, they stand by what they believe in. And, you know, I'm going to stand by them this time because that big bad Anina Sarkeesian was so mean to me at VidCon. How dare her! A little bit lispy. Bit of lispy queer energy to that clip as well, I'd argue. Is Tipster being queered? <laughs> Do you reckon? Do you reckon all the time around the trans is queering him a bit? The Tipsternator's coming for you. <laughs> Come on now, stop it. Right. So yeah, it, look, at the end of the day, that could have been funny. Bit cringe. He's gone about it in a bit of a cringe way. It's not the end of the world. It's just kind of a bit rubbish. It didn't really seem to get that much engagement either, sadly. Very tragic. Oh my god. Boogie about to go full John Tron. You've got to be totally delusional to think that Tipster's going to become a white nationalist. I mean, sorry, Boogie's going to become a white nationalist. He's just given a kind of like fairly unremarkable take about the Gamergate stuff. Yeah, the, the overly forced woke shit's kind of annoying. Also, this is so insane, this idea that if you want to talk about the, the this fucking sweet baby ink stuff, 
and you want to give a perspective like, yeah, it's a bit cringe how they're putting this stuff in games. That makes you some sort of Nazi or fascist now, apparently. John Tron is not, not a white nationalist. No, but my point is, that's what the message is going to be put across. I don't fucking know what politics exactly John Tron is, but that is what the message is in this tweet, isn't it? He's trying to say John Tron is really ba a really bad far-right guy, and that's what Boogie is becoming when you link it up to the other video that he did, you know? That's the point that's trying to be put across here. We only know Boogie's takes on black economics. Very true. So anyway, um, Boogie actually responded to Tipster, which was quite impressive, quite surprising when I saw this earlier today. Okay. And I must say, Boogie kind of cooked. What what is Boogie cooking? What is this? Tipster. Like he's calling him out. He knows. He knows. He fucking knows the tipster law. That's mental. Tipster. Glad to see you stop defending Vosh and his lollyporn and horse rape fantasies long enough to type this. Bro, that's nuts. He's going all in. But no, unlike you, a person who got ejected from the commentary community to go fly false rainbow flags, I am no grifter. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You are the perfect example of the type of person whose politics should stay far away from video games. I don't want you and your pedophilic shit anywhere near them. Politely go fuck yourself. The tip has slipped. Uh oh. Also, another thing that Tipster shared as well, he's responding to this, which we'll look at. I've got to say, right? It's funny, actually, because I was watching uh, Lerix's segment earlier on the um, the Too Mad stuff, and he made a point which I agreed with, where it's like people overstate the blocking thing, right? You know, you block... I don't really block people that often, if ever. Ra very rarely, if someone's a complete psychotic freak, I might do. But generally speaking, I don't really care that much to block, right? But blocking someone isn't that big a deal. And if you get blocked by someone, it's probably because you were being an annoying freak weirdo, more than likely, Okay. But it's undoubted that Tipster definitely is someone that blocks very quickly on things, as can be attested to by many in the commentary community. If you upset Tipster, he will block you in a heartbeat, right? So why is he showboating about getting blocked by Boogie here? The truth hurts, Boogie. Like, it's so pathetic, man. When people that are known for being little Weasley blockers on Twitter try and flex that. So apparently, Boogie block, blocked Tipster. But then also, um, Boogie then responded, I think, to this tweet. So I guess he unblocked him or something. Anyway, Tipster has responded. Tipster has responded to the brutal roast that he received, okay? Here we go. Oh, the war the <laughs> the wars are heating up. The local wars have begun. Who ghost wrote this tweet for you, Boogie? Cuz we both know a spineless coward like you didn't do it. Let me remind everyone what your original response to me response to me was. Oh, and you want to talk about pedophiles? Aren't you the guy who recently literally shared a table with an actual pedophile to chow down on Doritos and Mountain Dew? <sighs> oh, I probably wouldn't be uh, bringing that up, to be honest, Tippy. I'm not sure if you've really got much ground to stand on there, to be honest. But anyway. What did EDP445 get caught doing again? Oh, yeah. Trying to meet a 13-year-old for sex. 
You keep good company, Boogie. Breaking bread with a pedo and siding with literally Nazis and bigots in Gamergate. Damn, Boogie. You sure have changed. Let's hope being on the right side of history this time around goes well for you and that all those friendly Gamergaters don't chew up and spit you out the way Anita Sarkeesian did and had you crying like a little bitch at VidCon. Because we all know the anti-woke grifters won't turn on you the moment how they, re they realise how pathetic you really are. Hmm. <laughs> Dude, there's some crazy replies to this. I disavow the replies. Nah, I reckon this is a this is still a uh, boogie win. I'm calling this as a boogie win. I think he didn't really do much to push back on the vow stuff, did he? I mean, as we all know, that is a banned topic in his Discord, isn't it? I think I looked at this yesterday, but fuck it, we'll throw it up again. It's funny. Old Tippy is not one in this issue to be discussed. At here, I wanted to take a moment to post some tips on things to look out for that are banned topics moving forward in my chat, as well as the Discord for the foreseeable future. The topics of Lolly, Lollicon, Shota, Shotacon, or CP, unless the topic is being covered on stream, involves these topics. The topic of non-sophilia, non unless the topic being covered on stream involves this topic. The Vosh folder incident, out of context clips, drama or defense of Vosh by myself or Keffels. False, alleg false allegations. <gasps> oh. Of myself, Vosh or Keffels being at a lollicon, shotacon, pedo or groomer. Mentions of commentary community creators that are clearly meant to derail the stream, promote their content, or appear to be part of a hate raid harassment campaign. If you see any mentions of the above topics in the Discord on my live stream chat, please delete their chat and give the user a warning. Failure to comply can result in further action. Do not disclose publicly that these topics are banned. Simply ask any users discussing these to refrain from doing so. Delete their chat and take additional action as needed. Thank you. I think when you look at it all in context, yeah, I'm going to call this as a tipster L, I think. I think <laughs> boogie win, tipster L. I just don't understand why you would suppress the discussion of drama that you were literally just involved in, in a Discord. Like, it's so stupid. Who cares if people fucking talk about some drama you were involved in? Let, let the people speak their truth, you know? Has there ever been a tips to win? A long, a long, long, long time ago at this point. A long time ago. Why not mention these topics are banned publicly? Well, this is probably some sort of mod conversation and he wanted to keep it on the down low because he didn't want people to realise that he was suppressing conversation about a drama that he was involved in because it's embarrassing, isn't it? You know, like if you're involved in a drama that you take a big L on, and then you go to your community and you go to your moderators and say, don't let people talk about that. It comes across as quite weak and pathetic, you know? Oh no, don't talk about that big thing that I was involved in where I had to eat a massive fucking L. Very cringe. It's like how a person talks with their legal team, but he's just telling it to his Discord. Yeah, exactly. The last major tips to win was Susie Lou. Like I've said before, I came into contact with Tipster over something a couple of years ago now, and he seemed to have pretty decent takes. And uh, yeah. But... Obviously, you know, I listen, I am not fucking Nicholas Diorio tier. I'm not Nicholas Diorio pilled on the tipster question. I'm never going to have like an AI thing or something like that. Um, I just think he's kind of a funny... He, he, my, I think my description of him obviously is correct. He's just a bumbling retard constantly stepping on rakes. That's it. That's what he is to me. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, shit.
but uh, but yeah. Anyway, so Boogie is also taking a bit of an L here, though. While still getting a bunch of engagement. Okay, no, Boogie, <laughs> dude. Boogie is going to make like a fucking bit of money off of this. Okay, he's got his Twitter blue thing, 27 million thing. That's probably a bit of cash and all the other tweets about it. Tips to being a bumbling idiot is way too kind. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. You're, you're right, actually. I'll give you that. That's true. So I think that that's the kind of fundamental level of what I see him as. Okay. Right. But I think that... Uh, <laughs> what does 27 million impressions get you? 10 bucks. Come on now. It's at least 15. That's at least $15 worth. Okay. Now, to be honest with you, he's probably going to make... I mean, it's not going to be ridiculous, but it's something. I mean, he needs every fucking cent he can get at the moment, right? Anyway, the thing is with Tipster, yes, he's a bumbling idiot that steps into rakes, but you're right, it does go a bit beyond that because he also lies. He's also a liar and he lies about things in order to cover stuff up that he's done that are bad. Like one example is when he did the lollycon thing, you know, later on he went on to say, all I did was ask a question about whether or not it was lolly. And it's like, but you didn't do that. You were very obnoxious and smug about it and got made to look like an idiot. And if you hadn't been obnoxious and smug, you probably would have come through it a bit better, you know? But once again, he had to throw himself on the sword for one of his goth mummies. So yeah, there is a level of like malice or like shittiness beyond that too. He's not just a, he's, he's a bumbling idiot, but he's also, so he's a bumbling idiot that steps into rakes. And then when someone asks him, why have you got that big mark on your face? He says, I didn't step on a rake. Something like that, maybe. I don't know. He lies to protect himself from embarrassment, basically, and that's always a bad, a bad move. So anyway, Boogie also is taking an L, it seems. But he is going to make some cash off of this, at least. Before I hop off Twitter for a while, I've pissed off a lot of POC and LGBTQ folks in the past 24 hours. Know that I still love you and will always fight for you when I can. But I won't change my opinion that video games are meant to be fun and not lectures. I'm not sorry about that. Nearly one million impressions. Honestly, I think that looking at impressions is actually a good thing to think about too. Like he's getting a fucking ton of attention off of this. And this is only going to benefit him on a personal level. But this is going to be great drama for the local podcast too. So yeah, Fat Francis, well done. Right, okay, then guys, as promised, let's watch this new tips the video. Okay, you guys are getting tips to treats today. <laughs> it's honestly crazy to me. It's like, dude, how, how DK was like, okay. This tips the guy is a bit of a fucking joker. Let's put him up on the second channel. Yeah, keep okay, him on the second channel. And it got like a bunch of views. So now I'm thinking like we probably need to get some tips to shout out on main. You know? Hey, John Sanchez. Pair character stretching his arm forward, raising the thumbs up. Thank you. I'm honestly not sure. Let's have a little look and see. Right, here we go. Old Tippy, what's old Tippy got to say? Oh no, it's 48 minutes long. Oh my God. Okay, let's go. I'm sure a lot of you guys in my chat are familiar with a content creator known as Boogie2988. Uh, do we have some Boogie on the soundboard? I think we do. me. We do. We absolutely have Boogie on the soundboard. <laughs> That's the first point of call is do we have something on the soundboard for this? 
So we're going to be talking about a content creator known as Boogie2988 because recently he decided to uh, do something very interesting uh, that I did not see coming. Now, you guys may know, not too long ago, I talked about uh, Gamergate 2, this whole thing uh, with, uh, what is it, Sweet Baby I'll never get or whatever. I kind of gave my thoughts on it. I did get a little bit of pushback, some people saying that I'm not really well-informed on the topic. Uh, so I've done, you know, I've watched some videos from both sides of the, the argument, uh, and I don't think I was oh, too far off, if I'm being oh, completely shit. honest. Although, during the course of this topic, I will kind of address some things that I might have heard oh, in my previous coverage. But either way, uh, you know, I have my thoughts on it, and I pretty much stand by the thoughts that I gave before in my previous video. I think this is a nothing burger. I think it's not all that big of a deal. And uh, I think it's insane to try and revive the ashes of Gamergate over this stupid shit. Yet here we are. Uh, okay, this is such a, uh, an uninformed take, okay? He is right. For those of you who don't know, here's what happened. Really simple. Really simple, okay? A guy has, because of discussion about Sweet Baby Inc. that's happened over the last few months, a guy has got a Steam list page, okay, um, a curated page with these are the games that Sweet Baby Inc. have worked on. The intent being, if you don't want to deal with Sweet Baby Inc., avoid these games, okay? A Sweet Baby Inc. employee tweeted out about the list and tried to brigade, brigade the list and brigade the guy that created it to get him banned, Right? That caused a drama and a controversy and people were like, what the hell? Why is this guy doing this? There's nothing wrong with having a list, right? And then multiple fucking gaming press organizations started pumping out articles talking about how bad gamers are and they're basically like Kiwi farmers and nothing's going on. Don't pay attention. Don't look. Nothing at all. Not even mentioning the fact that it was this fucking dude calling for his community to attack the guy that made the list that started all this in the first place. Now, are there people on the Gamergate 2 side that are pushing it? Yeah, of course there are. But you're completely not explaining the actual nature of what's happened in saying that when you go, you know, you, the implication is that people are out there and they're the ones that have forced their hand when it's actually fucking Sweet Baby Inc. employee. He's the one that started all this new bout of drama that's now led to this Gamergate 2 thing that's happening. And also, it doesn't really seem like he's looked into it that much in terms of this idea that it's like a nothing burger. Like, I don't think it's a nothing burger. I don't think there's nothing there whatsoever. Overstated? Sure, some people are overstating it. But like, you know, we looked at that thing today. And I think it's pretty obvious that, you know, Sweet Baby Inc. have got a, a sort of pathway or a pipeline from a shit a game developer making an indie game that's got um progressive shit in it, and then them seeing that and then them putting them in a place where they're with a bigger game dev when they probably don't have the capability or the experience to do so. That's what it seems like, at least. But anyway. Anyway, a little bit fucking stupid to kind of refer to it in that way and act like it's not the sweet baby ink side, so to speak, that have actually pushed this in the first place. Why do you want to play but that? But in any case, uh, Boogie decided to chime in with his thoughts on Gamergate 2, and apparently he's decided that this time around he's going to join the fray. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Because last... Bro, time. Uh, and I, but in any case, uh, Boogie decided to chime in with his thoughts on Gamergate Two, and apparently he's decided that this time around he's going to join the fray. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh, shit. Because oh, last shit. time, uh, and I'm just basically I'm paraphrasing what he said, but he said something along the lines of he was a fence sitter last time, and you know he tried to you know pander to like leftists and stuff like that the last time around, and it didn't do him any good. So now he's going to be on the quote right side of history. That's what he says. Oh. Uh oh. Pretty good. So now he's going to be on the quote right side of history. Oh, what... did you hear the voice crack? Uh oh. No, I did. I did. Bro. He says, if you don't believe me, we'll see it in a little bit. Okay, I'll check out but the in any article, case, yeah. uh, He tweeted this out uh, yesterday at the time of this recording. Hot take video games are supposed to be fun. You know, I'd actually agree. Video games are supposed to be fun. And a lot of video games are fun. There's a few stinkers that get released or maybe games that aren't just my cup of tea. But for the most part, video games are fun and they are meant to be fun. So video games are supposed to be fun, not lectures about why being a white man is bad. Now, I have to be honest with you guys, chat. Um, you know... I can't remember ever playing a video game that lectured me on how being a white man is bad. Can I get some ones in the chat if you've ever played a video game that lectured you on how being a white man is bad? Because I don't think I've ever played a game that does that. And it's looking like my chat agrees with me on that because I'm not seeing any ones. I'm seeing a lot of twos, 
and a lot of nopes and stuff like that. But like, I'm not seeing any one. So I, you know, something tells me that Boogie might have pulled that out of his ass. But in any case, he says, watch this on my channel. I just like, the thing is, this is so obviously a tweet that is designed to, um, you know, stoke a sort of, what's the right word? Like a, like a controversy. Like it's so obviously, bait. it's like bait. It's bait. It's fucking, that's it. It's bait, isn't it? It's obviously fucking bait. So transparently bait. And he's taken it that seriously. I just think sometimes when it's clearly bait, you're just worth going, oh yeah, that's a bit of a dumb take, but whatever, and moving on about it, right? But he's like giving this sort of super overall analysis of it and giving his takes. You know, it's almost like he's getting taken for a mug, you know? You want more a more nuanced take on this tweet gamergate 2 is officialed uh sweet baby inc versus elon musk so let's go ahead i have the video pulled up here this is the video in question and we're going to watch it and we're going to kind of give our thoughts as we go along so without further ado pa, 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 pa. play that shit here we go chat well gamers grab your mountain dew okay looks like i need to boost the audio just to oh he's going to boost it don't worry do real quick here we go he's going to boost it guys Lock and load your controllers. Gamergate 2 has officially begun. And who's leading the clap back this time? Is it uh, just some random neck beard on the internet like me? No, it's Elon freaking Musk. And you might be asking, who is Elon squaring off against? Is it some Anita Sarkeesian type? No, it's Homeland Security. I'm gonna break this video down into two parts to get people caught up to speed as to exactly what's happening and why it's happening. And secondly, as an old head who lived through the first Gamergate and in fact made quite a few mistakes during the first Gamergate, I, uh, I I want to talk about my opinion on what's probably going to happen here. And I remember for me, the first Gamergate, when that happened or whatever, like I remember hearing a lot of uh, content creators talking about it and like, you know, gaming journalism outlets talking about it and stuff, but I didn't really understand what it was at the time. It wasn't something until like later on that I kind of like looked into it and found out what it was. And I was like, oh man, this is like pretty shitty. You know, on the surface, it sounds like, you know, something that would be good. Ethics and games journalism. That's the way they framed it. Is we're just trying to have ethics and games journalism. And then when you actually see what it became, like this whole like harassment campaign against like women and gaming and stuff like that, it was a fucking like. Oh my dude, he just he spits out like. <laughs> Do you know what I feel like? You know, in Spider Man Three, um, when uh, you know the Venom suit and stuff, right? And the Venom suit starts to take over and goes over. I feel like that, but with tips to hate. You know, I feel like I'm trying to be reasonable and trying to be fair and stuff like that and be like, come on, guys, he's not that big a deal, is he, that you need to fucking talk about? But then it just takes over me. And it's like, <laughs> da -da 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 -da! and I'm ready to fucking do a, bu a tips the bully stream, you know? But um, it's so funny how it's like he clearly hasn't gone and fucking looked into it and he hasn't actually engaged with what's being said and all that shit, he's just giving whatever the correct take is for the current political alignment that he's got, you know? Because there's no way that you can take a fair look at everything that's happening and come to the conclusion and present it in the way that he has, right? Like, to me, it's not just like a difference of opinion, you know, he is spouting the progressive line when I'm pretty sure that previously he would have, like probably had a more balanced take on it, I would imagine. I mean, I remember there's like a video of him talking about the Carl Rittenhouse case and celebrating Carl Rittenhouse getting off or something. You know, I'd be interested to see what he'd say about it now. Chud got brainwashed by Bo Blacks and Nicholas DiOrio. Nicholas DiOrio is the venom to my Spider-Man. That is true. Mess. Uh, so, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad I had no involvement in that the first time around because it just sounds like a fucking mess we should be doing. Now, all of this starts with a company that you probably never heard of, known as Sweet Baby. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! In their own words, is a narrative development and consultation studio based in Montreal and working around the globe. Their mission is to tell better, more empathetic stories while diversifying and enriching the video games industry. They aim to make more games more engaging, more fun, more meaningful, and more inclusive for everyone. Spoiler alert, they mostly failed to do so. Now, right this is what's like crazy to me, right? Okay, so first of all, like if you're not familiar with Sweet Baby Inc., obviously he read their description of themselves off their website, but they're a consulting firm, okay? Like that's kind of what they are. Uh, companies can hire them to kind of evaluate their current progress on a project and they can kind of like give advice like any other consulting firm will do. They'll evaluate things. They'll give advice on how they think that they can improve the project from a narrative perspective or whatever. Like if you've ever basically had your employer or maybe you're an employer yourself and you've worked with a consulting firm, like this is what they do. 
You know, they'll consult whatever you're hiring them to look at. They'll give you advice and it's up to you whether you take the advice or not. And this is like. It's up to you whether you take the advice or not. Like, what is this narrative that companies are just paying for a service and then they may not even use the advice that they give? <laughs> Dude, it's so funny. It's such a retarded idea. And also, like, how does he explain the clip of that woman saying that, you know, when you're working for a game company, go and terrify them, you know, with the consequences if they don't do what you want? How does he explain that shit, you know? You know, it's just like a complete resistance to engaging with the actual... Um, you know, criticism or some of the clips that are do look bad for Sweet Baby. And it's just pushing out the progressive narrative on this. You know, all the talking points. It's like he's taking it from a fucking Kotaku article. All the talking points, you know. Yeah, well, you know, you see, the thing with it is, um, they're just a, you know, it's a consulting company. And it's up to them whether or not they implement the recommendations. It's totally optional. And like not thinking of or talking about a bit deeper about the incentives, about anything beyond that. Just a very plain obvious take backing up the progressive narrative about the situation because that's the side that he's on now an optional thing okay like you choose to hire these firms to help you with these various different things and in this case it's a consulting firm to help with you know narratives of video games and stuff like that uh and like a lot of times they're uh helping with like diversity and inclusion in games things of that nature obviously the anti-woke crowd not big fans of this stuff me personally i don't give a shit as long as the game's fun to play i don't really care if they, you know, do this kind of stuff during the creation of the game, as long as it's fun, like, I don't give a fuck. Uh, but in any case, uh, here's some of the games that they've worked on. Alan Wake, God of War, Ragnarok. Uh, you know, there's some pretty noteworthy games here. Very successful games as well. Um, so when I see a lot of people talking about how, like, oh, well, with Sweet Baby Inc. is involved in your game, like, it's, like, doomed to fail. It's like, well, no, there's been several successful games that they've worked on, and it doesn't really... Is anyone... Dude, is anyone claiming they're all doomed to fail? Yeah. I don't even know if that's a thing of like, oh, oh yeah, a game that's had that involvement was well, doomed to fail. Go work, go broke. Yeah, it, it, every time I hear someone talk about it, you know, I have spent quite a bit of time looking at this quite broadly, you know. And I've also been critical of some of the pro Gamergate 2 people because some of it's cringe, you know? So it's not like I'm just criticizing one side. I think that there's, I'm more siding with the Gamergate 2ers, so to speak. But there is some fucking gay shit to, to, to look, talk about there, you know? But like when I hear him talk about it and explain it, I'm like, who's saying that? Who's saying that? Who's saying that? You know, it's like they're just saying things that no one is really saying in a, in a substantial way. It's more so just, hey, there's this company. Um, they worked on these games and, and a broader conversation about some of the fucking incentives at play and maybe the fact that they're getting people and pushing them in certain directions to AAA studios, et cetera, et cetera, you know? You hurt anything, so I don't get it, right? Like, it just seems kind of dumb, but anyway. Here on their website, you'll see a list of games that they have worked on. And this is important later, so take a big note. But you'll see that some of these games have been too big to fail. Uh, God of War, Ragnarok, you know, see That sounds like a coke to me, okay? If you're trying to sell me on this idea that this company, anything they touch turns to shit, okay? This company, anything they touch turns to shit. I, you know, I'm sure that some people are saying this, okay? But I just, I just don't feel this is the broad trend of the, the uh, criticism that's been made, you know? Hey, if that's what you want to sell me on, that they're bad for the games industry because everything they touch. Come on, Chad, it's a 50 minute video. Don't pause. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! You guys have got fucking ADHD. Just go and watch someone else. If you don't like pausing, okay, you are going to have to go and watch someone else or watch the video yourself because my channel is not just sit here and watch a video, okay? That is the most boring, insufferable content going, and it's certainly not the kind of content that I like to make. So my recommendation is if you're not up for me pausing and giving my thoughts, go and watch the original video or alternatively, uh, go and watch someone else.
turns to shit. Uh, you can't tell me a cope like, oh, you know, these games, they were too big to fail. You know, yeah, they Burn were involved in this and they did some horrible things in these games, but they were too big to fail. Like, come on. All right. You're already arguing against your own point here. OK, to the original God of War, Alan Wake 2 sequel to the original Alan Wake, Spider-Man 2, too big to fail. And some other games on here are some real stinkers like uh, Suicide Squad, where they worked on the script writing, the banter, the cutscenes. That's what's funny. It's like, so he's saying like Alan Wake 2, God of War, Ragnarok, Spider-Man 2. He's saying these games were too big to fail. But then he's talking about how like Suicide Squad was a stinker, which I actually, it, I hear it is a pretty bad game. I didn't play it myself. It wasn't something I was interested in. But pretty much everybody I know who's played it, they've said, yeah, it's a pretty bad game. Uh, but here's the thing. Why are these big name titles, Alan Wake 2, God of War, Ragnarok, Spider-Man 2, why were these ones, quote, too big to fail, but another big title that was also very, very big, it was a big production, had a big production house behind it, there was a lot of hype behind the game, and it ended up being a shitty game. Why wasn't Suicide Squad too big to fail? Because again, it's cope, and I know what my chat wants, and I'm going to give it to them. You are coping, coping and seeing. These games are too big to fail? But Don't Suicide Squad muscle. wasn't too big to fail? No. Oh, oh yeah, shit. this is a legitimate, like, bad game. A lot of people would agree that it's a bad game. But, like, dude, to make the argument that, like, any game that these people touch just turns to shit, it's clearly not true because we have several examples here that are just fine. I fucking hate everyone. Anyway. He's got a button that you press that has that long a sound. Why would you not just play the first couple of bars? Why would you have to play the whole thing? Yeah, that is absolutely absurd. Things. You know, the things that made Suicide Squad utterly fail. Meanwhile, over here on Steam, you'll see these curation pages where people can curate lists of games based on all kinds of different things, whether or not they recommend them or don't recommend them, the type of game they are, the type of DRM they use. And, and this user decided to create a list of games based on games that Sweet Baby Incorporated had worked on. That way, you know, if you've had a good experience with this company in the past, you could play that game based on that recommendation. And if you've had a bad experience in the past, you can choose to avoid that game. And this is That's just, bullshit, okay? Like, the notion that someone would, oh, you know, I played a Sweet Baby Ink game and it was good, and so this list was created for people who might want to play other Sweet Baby Ink games. Come on, Boogie. We know what the reason was that this created curated list was created. It was purely created because, like, hey, you know, Sweet Baby Inc., uh, they do woke games, and uh, we don't want woke games, so uh, here's a list of all the games that they make so you don't play them. Like, nobody's using this Dude. list. Does he really think that that is how every single person engages with this list? <laughs> what is he on about? There's going to be a variety of people. There's going to be some people that look at it and go, oh, Sweet Baby Ink. I don't want to play anything with Sweet Baby Ink in, so I'm not going to play them. It could be, oh, Sweet Baby Ink. Oh, I like the look of that game, but mm, I'm maybe going to wait till it's on sale. Or, do you know what I mean? It's to be used as a means to, to, to give you more information as a consumer because people can choose not to buy a game for any reason. What, like... <laughs> I just the smug, the smug kind of like misrepresentation of of the points is so infuriating to me. And he's right, yeah. I mean, obviously, this list is not designed to be a oh yeah, check it out. I mean, they're all not recommended, but to be like yo. Uh, I had a positive experience with a Sweet Baby Ink game, so I want to use this list to play other games of theirs. Come on. Here to inform the consumer. Well, eventually, the Steam group caught the attention of Chris Kindred, who works for Sweet Baby Incorporated. And the Chris Under Collective in the chat says, uh, it's the right-wing blacklist. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. That was, that's the, what the intent of this list is. The blacklist? How can it be a blacklist? It's not a blacklist. It's just, hey, this is not recommended. If you don't want Sweet Baby Ink, don't play the game. And then they decide. And I think it's like... I mean, at the end of the day, if they, somebody wants to create a list because they're like, oh, man, my woke video games, you should not play. whatever, make your little list. It's whatever. But like, even so, like, it, it's I think we can agree that it's kind of cringe, though. Like, why do you care so much whether like a company worked on a game or if you is it is it cringe? <laughs> I don't think <laughs> this is so alien. To, I don't think it's cringe or it's not cringe. It's just, hey, these if you don't like these games, don't play them. How is he going to engage with the fact that this Chris Kindred guy as well was fucking telling people to report? If you don't want to play the game, then don't play the game. But I just, it just seems like lame to make such a big deal about, like, how is this any different than heels versus babyface getting worked up over like pronouns in a game? You know, this is just the next level extension of that. Anyway. 
Chris tweeted out saying that there was a harassment group uh, dedicated to harassing Sweet Baby Incorporated and that it obviously doesn't adhere to Steam's policies and code of conduct. And she encouraged people to report report the hell out of the group in the hopes that it would get taken down. And while you're at now, it, I will say this, okay? I actually do have oh. some criticism to give oh, the folks okay. over at Sweet Baby Inc. This hey. right here basically like signal boosting like a tweet like hey go and flag this shit or whatever like, this was really dumb okay like if you're dealing with legitimate harassment like you know doxings and swatting threats and you know like actual forms of harassment like just report that shit and don't say anything about it just quietly to yourself if you are facing legitimate forms of harassment report it. oh but like anytime that you do these like mass report like hey you know what can you guys all report like this page for me? You know, oh, this shit. massive oh, following shit. that I have. Can you go and report these people because they're like harassing me or whatever? Like you're just asking for trouble at that point. Okay. We've seen what happened during the first round of Gamergate. And okay. I mean, it's a good take, but it's like, to me, my take on it is this is a fucking despicable thing to do. But his take is not that it's necessarily, it's like more so that it's like you're asking for trouble by doing this. Not that it's just really wrong to do that like it comes across like he recognizes there's a limit on the criticism that he can issue in this direction so he's got to couch it quite strongly he can't just come out and say what it is exactly yeah he's not saying it's bad he's saying it's not a good move right it's like he's trying to couch it because he knows his soy leftoid freak friends won't accept that he's too critical of it you know annoying but at least he is saying it's wrong in some fashion at least that's something but you know I mean, I just, I just don't understand. Like, the language here is so malicious and so vicious. Like, this guy wants to take this guy's Steam account down and remove his ability to play games he spent money on. Why? That's such an insane thing to want to happen to someone. Just because they made a fucking list about your company's game, games they've worked on. And people doing posts like this and uh even if you feel justified or not in doing it it's just you're, you're just we know how these people operate when they see these mass flagging campaigns they're going to attack people who do that so just just don't do that just if somebody's legitimately harassing you just just silently report it and move on okay that, that's all i have to say about that this was kind of dumb why don't you report this guy the guy who created this consumer advocacy list uh, report his account that he spent all his time and all this money on wait what did he just say get that see these mass flagging campaigns they're going to attack people who do that so just just don't do that just if somebody's legitimately harassing you just just silently report it and move on okay that, that's all i have to say about that this was kind of dumb why don't you report this guy the guy who's kind of dumb consumer <laughs> advocacy list. i mean i you know i it's difficult because i'm not trying to soy out and say oh no you need to be critical of it or something right but like to me, it just seems like it's kind of dumb. This guy wanted to get this guy's Steam account taken down. Is that not like an insane thing to you over an, a list that is populated from the company's own information of games they've worked on? And he deserve, according to this Chris Kindred guy, he deserves to have his Steam account taken down for that. It's not dumb. It's fucking disgraceful that someone would do this. And this is what started the whole drama off. Yes, it's evil. It's like an evil thing to do. You get your nose put out of joint and you like take this, destroy this, you know, fuck this guy up in some way, you know? Yes, despicable and spiteful. Yes, Stylo. Yes, thank you for giving me the language that I was looking for. Thank you. A report his account that he spent all his time and all this money on to see if you can get that taken away from him. Look, and report the creator since he loves his account so much. For making a list and you know like this is this is like taking like <laughs> it's like you're taking money out of someone's hand for nothing for n barely anything um as well and again because he was con informing consumers now you remember earlier when we were taking a look at the sweet baby website I pointed out that they list the games Ooh. that they have worked on right Ooh. on their website. Ooh. So if they're doing that themselves, are they harassing themselves? How could it possibly be harassment to copy paste this list of games that they've posted themselves over on Steam? That it's nonsensical and it's definitely not worth somebody losing their Steam account over. Now, obviously, gamers didn't like that, uh, but you know who else didn't? Twitter. Uh, Twitter fed Chris a six day ban for targeted harassment. The thing that Chris was actually doing 
the thing that, you know, she was accusing others of doing and decided to do herself. Meanwhile, we have... Yeah, I mean, if you're asking people to mass report shit like that, like you're using a large platform to do something like that, like, yeah, that can be interpreted as a form of targeted harassment. So again, my criticism to Sweet Baby Inc., that wasn't smart. They, they, they shouldn't have done that. Go Buds, who I presume you remember from the first... Yeah, that wasn't... <laughs> I'm telling you, I know 100% that... He is being measured in how he is being critical because he doesn't want to come across like he's going too hard for them, right? That's that's what's going on here, I think. First gamer gate, if you even are. from a you know public facing perspective, like a PR sort of thing, it's just not a good look, and it's just going to result in people feeling like they have more justification to harass you. Just don't do it. Don't do this. Don't do these massive call outs for mass flagging campaigns of this nature. Just just don't do it. Around for it pointing out that Steam doesn't, you know, force people to prove that a game has been worked on by Sweet Baby Incorporated, and that might be why it should get taken down. This got community noted by the fact that, number one, Lego Butts works for Sweet Baby Incorporated and probably shouldn't be trusted on this particular topic, and that, secondly, the curator literally uses that games list that they have on their website that I showed you early to, you know, prove that these are the games they've worked on. And allow me to interject some editorial here. Why are these guys afraid of people listing the games they've worked on to begin with? If you've done good work, and you're proud of the work you've done, someone listing all the games you've worked on should be doing you a favor, right? Unless, of course, you know the work you're putting in is bad and it's ruined some of the- I mean, like to some extent, like you have people who will see lists like this and they'll use them as an excuse to target game developers who have worked with Sweet Baby Inks, target, you know, Sweet Baby Ink directly. Uh, they'll do things like- Yeah, why not do the kind of smug like, oh, thanks for putting, <laughs> thanks for putting all our games into a very- Easy to, to look at and easy to understand list. Wow. Wow, we thank you so much. I appreciate it. You know, review bomb any games that they've worked on and stuff like that. And these are things that can be genuinely harmful but to yeah. developers and stuff like that. Oh, so shit! I can understand oh, why they would be upset about this curated list that, as somebody in the chat mentioned earlier, it's basically a blacklist by right-wing gamers and stuff like that. So I can understand why they would be upset about this list. I still don't think they should have done the whole call out for like a mass report thing or whatever. Uh, that definitely shouldn't have happened. Uh, but uh, I understand why they would be frustrated about the existence of this list. Really? Games that could have been curated, you know, review bomb inks, target, you know, Sweet Baby Ink directly. Uh, they'll do things like, you know, review bomb any games that they've worked on and stuff like that. And these are things that can be genuinely harmful to the developers and stuff. Has that happened? What? <laughs> Some of this stuff you can't even review bomb at this point. Like Alan Wake has been out for ages. Like fuck it, oh, there's going to be a ton of reviews that are more positive. You can't review bomb that. Like this is he's just saying shit. He's just talking shit here. What? <laughs> he's just saying a bunch of bullshit. Stuff like that. So I can understand why they would be upset about this curated list that, as somebody in the chat mentioned earlier, it's basically a blacklist by right wing gamers and stuff like that. So I can. A blacklist. It's not a blacklist. That's not what blacklist means. Blacklist is a list of okay, things that you've got but some power to enforce saying not, not, not anything to do with this. Saying this and can't look at Keffels for the Kiwi Farms shit. It is the same fucking thing, you fat retard. Thank you very much, Austrian Painter, for the 333. Appreciate it. <clears throat> It's just, it's, it's like just com a complete deceptive, deceptive way of describing it. A blacklist. Like a blacklist has much more disastrous outcomes for you. Like if you put on a blacklist, like let's say in Hollywood, you get put on a blacklist. Okay. It means that you're not allowed to do so. You, you're not going to get called for certain jobs, right? If you get put on a, a bars, a, a town's bars blacklist, it means you can't get in. If you get put on a bars blacklist, it means you can't come in ever again, you know? understand why they would be upset about this list i still don't think they should have done the whole call out for like a mass report thing or whatever uh that definitely shouldn't have happened uh but uh i understand why they would be frustrated about the existence of this list games that could have been better then i can understand why i mean i mean okay there could be a disagreement there i don't really understand why they'd be that bothered about it well i can understand like someone being like oh i don't like the fact they've done this list okay right Sure. But 
in terms of like, I, I can understand why they'd be bothered about it. I would understand someone looking at it and having and feeling a little bit like their nose is put out of joint about it, right? But in the context of what's happened, that this person has tried to get this guy's Steam account taken down, I do not understand it in that context, right? That context is utterly insane to me. So I do not understand it in the context of that. No. I do not understand the context of calling for it to be taken down. God, this is so fucking annoying, man. And you probably don't want people curating that list. I think they know what they're doing. Now, due to the Streisand effect. Nicholas was right. List Bo Blacks was right. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. People on that list supporting this cause. And as people dug around, they found this. The co-founder of Sweet Baby Incorporated basically saying that they bully people into putting this type of stuff in their games. Here, I'll let her speak for herself. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, um, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. I don't think it's ever a good look to say that your company is based. On yeah, I mean, like, I don't know what the context is of that clip. Uh, I don't know if anybody has found like the full clip because that clip's been making the rounds. And yeah, admittedly, in its current context, it does look pretty bad for sure. Um, but uh, I if anybody has like the full clip of that, I, I'd be more than happy to take a look at it. Uh, Oh my god, dude. <laughs> um, oh my god, we're this again. Of what's going to happen if they don't give you what okay, you want. Okay, that's wonderful. I don't think it's ever a but good how do I make to say that your company is based on Yeah, I mean, like, I, I don't know what the content is. why Tipster is upset. Even though he is a fat chungus, Boogie is far better looking than he is. When Tipster speaks, I can't look at his face. I stare at that massive fat roll swallowing his other chin. Thank you very much. For the uh, for this T thirty three in Austrian painter, thank you. Texas of that clip. Uh, I don't know if anybody has found like the full clip because that clip's been making the rounds, and yeah, admittedly, in its current context, it does look pretty bad for sure. Um, but uh... <laughs> I've looked into this, and the most substantial clip that the other side is using to make their claims. I don't have a good answer. I've not looked at the context. Oh, does anyone else have a context? Guys, guys, help me. Can I make this look better? Is there something else I can play that makes it look better, guys? Guys? <laughs> uh, I, if anybody has, like, the full clip of that, I, I'd be more than happy to take a look at it. Um, I, don't, I don't know what the context is, so I can't really comment too much on that on wielding cancel culture to get big companies to pay you but if at least you're providing a valuable service i guess that might be at least conceivable but if you wonder what kind of service sweet baby incorporated is is trying to provide well look at these tweets from felix that we spoke about earlier pay me to shoot down your white male lead game ideas i had a nightmare that i was a white male gamer yeah it's uh, it's pretty abundantly clear that they're not uh, they're not there to add diversity to games they're there to push white people and white males so the context is they said it ago is true. Just watch the whole thing and it's obvious the boss is just bullshitting through the whole presentation to sell a company services, making stuff up that a gamer would just... See, this is the thing. This is the thing with tips that are being like, oh, I've looked at both sides, right? I appreciate, you know, I've not looked at every single thing about this. That's impossible, okay? But I think that if you want to weigh in on this in a way and be educated about what the fucking arguments and points are, I think you would have need to, I mean, is it crazy to say that you should have watched that, what, 30 minute video of that woman talking? Like, that is like the, the absolute fundamental of what people are using the point to, to go, look at what Sweet Baby Inc is talking about, right? But you've not done that. Why? Why not just like watch it on stream? Why not engage with it? Because that is the thing that you need to be able to engage with to talk about this, surely, you know? Like, that was one of the first things that I watched when I first started talking about this, because I'm like... No, that's that's like one of the things that people are pointing to. And you listen to it and you're like, yeah, there's some pretty crazy stuff in here, you know? It is. It is. It, there's no context that's going to make someone saying that you should terrify, you know, your marketing team into acquiescing to your demands of progressive content that good. You know, it backs up the idea that it is what people are saying it is. Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Somebody in the chat says uh, that's just normal corporation stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's pretty normal for like, you know, various different corporations to hire like consultancy firms and stuff like that to evaluate various different things. Uh, that's why I don't think this like sweet baby thing is like as big of an issue. I do think it was a bad idea for them to try and mass report uh, the Steam user and the Steam curated list. Uh, but as far as like what the company's actually doing, like I don't give a shit. It doesn't, I don't care.
out. Then you got the old media stepping in. Uh, this is game developer, a uh, writer by the name of Brian Francis, who says, Steam and Discord are being used as a home base for hateful reactionaries to single out and harass game developers. Why are Valve and Discord permitting harassment against Sweet Baby Incorporated? And again, the harassment Bryant is so upset about is that someone copy and pasted from the Sweet Baby Incorporated website the list of games they've worked on so that you can- make You're talking about the woman talking at the marketing thing? Yeah, but I'm just saying like, I've tried to find like the full clip. I haven't had any luck finding the full clip, unfortunately. What is he on about? <laughs> oh, it's so hard to find the full video that everyone is fucking talking about. Dude, this guy is unreal. <laughs> you literally couldn't you couldn't look anywhere without finding it on Twitter when it was happening. No. <laughs> How can you not claim that you can't find the very popular video that everyone was talking about? Let the tips to hate consume you. Just ask someone. Yeah. Hey, um, I want to watch that full thing. Do you have it? Ask a, a colleague or someone you're friends with. Bo Blacks was right. What does that mean? What do you mean by that? <laughs> Is this, am, I, am I doing a tips to bully stream now? Tips to bully stream. Uh, so I don't know what the full context is of that. It's very obvious that it was clip chimped in some way. Um, but I would like to see the full. Nah, sadly, the the, the Chud tips the bridge is uh, long gone. I'm afraid. He uh he soft uh he so you know what soft soft blocking is. Well, they don't block you, but they make it so that you're not following them anymore and unfollowed me. So that bridge unfortunately is finished now. He used to come by my stream from time to time. He used to come by my stream from time to time. I've tried to find like the full clip. I haven't had any luck finding the full clip, unfortunately. Uh, so I don't know what the full context is of that. It's very obvious that it was clip chimped in some way. Um, but I would. How can you say that something is clip chimped if you don't know what the fuller context is? How can you say it's very obviously clip chimped? The way you find out if something is clip chimped is if you watch a 30 second clip of someone saying, I hate redacted, I hate redacted, I hate redacted. And you're like, what the fuck? Is this guy racist? And then you go and look at the full context and the person that says, imagine if someone said, I hate redacted. That's what a clip chimp is. It means they've taken it out of the context that was intended to make it look worse, right? But unless you know that there's more context, you can't say it's clip chimped. And guess what? It's not fucking clip chimped because it is what it is. The person is saying, if you were working in a company and you want to put some progressive shit that you want to put in there, Go and terrify the marketing company to get them to do what you want to do. I'd like to see the full clip to have like a better idea of like what uh, was actually being said there. If I had to guess, it was probably something along the lines of like, hey, say you're working for a developer studio and they do something along the lines of like really badly represent uh, a minority group in games, for example. And you're like trying to like express your concerns to your higher ups like, hey, this is actually pretty bad. And this can get our company a lot of pushback if we don't fix this. Uh, why don't we fix this? And if they don't take your concerns seriously, then let, you know, basically go to the next level up and say, hey, you know, my supervisor is not taking my concerns seriously on this we might want to hire a consultancy firm to take a look at this and actually fix the basically the okay wait they, sorry sorry need the full clip to have like a better idea of like what uh, was actually being said there if i had to guess it was probably something along the lines of like hey say you're working for a developer studio and they do something along the lines of like really badly represent uh, a minority group in games for example and you're like trying to like express your concerns to your higher ups like hey this is actually pretty bad and this can get our company a lot of pushback <laughs> if we don't fix this uh, why don't we fix this and if they don't take your concerns seriously then let you know basically go to the next level up and say hey you know my supervisor's not taking my concerns seriously on this we might want to hire a consultancy firm to take a look at this and actually fix the basically the issues that they have here. Uh, I would guess that that was probably some. Why? M <laughs> why just? Why not just go watch it, dude? Why? Go. And the thing is, <laughs> dude, it's so funny. He's like he's demonstrating his massive bias because he is explaining it in a way that only solely benefits his side of the story as well. He's writing literal fan fiction about this clip now. <laughs> oh my god, dude. This is so bad. Something along the lines of what was being said, but obviously I haven't seen the full clip, so that's just speculation on my point. Make an informed decision. Why speculate? Just watch it. That they've worked on. I mean, I guess in Brian's article, he does point out that at one point there was a forum on that curation group where a lot of people, a handful of bad actors, said some crazy shit, but the curator just got rid of those forums. So there's nothing 
that it could possibly be harassment. On I mean, thing. that's good if he got rid of the forums, but at the same time, that's a clear example of how people were using that, you know, curated list as a tool for harassment. Like they were using it off as using it as a jumping off point uh, to harass. Yes, Logan. Logan, join the dark side. Join the dark side with me. Use the AI tippy. Well, the thing is, it's funny, is I spoke to someone about this fairly recently, privately. And, um, you know, it was like, oh, what's the deal with tips? I was just kind of said, yeah, people get really fucking crazy about him. But I don't think he's that. You know, he's just a fucking loser, really. You know, he's just a loser. He steps into rakes. But having engaged with more of his stuff recently, you know, I do think that, yeah, there is more to it than that. And there's something, there's something about the way that he acts that just makes him particularly fun to talk about and mock and have a bit of a laugh at him and, and that kind of thing, you know? It's, I guess, the lolcow aspect of it. And then it's combined with, like, whatever this is, which I guess is kind of characterized as, like, this kind of Hassan-esque, like, one-sided perspective, not looking at the other side, not engaging with it fully, to the point where he's claiming that he's got to look to stuff about this, but he hasn't looked at the core, most fundamental piece of evidence that the that get the anti sweet baby ink people are using to say, hey, look, this is what this company is truly about, you know. Whereas it's like, you know, read the article and then you would go and watch that. Do you know what I mean? You'd want to go and look and find out as much as you can within reason to come and come to the best conclusion about it. Surely, but anyway. ask game developer, sweet baby ink, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Page right. It's just a list of games. But here's where things get entirely off the rails. Uh, this group named Take This, which, after getting looked into, found out they were being funded by Homeland Security here in the United States, posted an article called Responding to Gamergate 2, saying Gamergate 2 is the latest targeting harassment campaign within the games industry, and it's aimed at Sweet Baby Incorporated, and that all scholars and journalists and game developers must do everything they can to shut down Gamergate 2 and denounce the gamers who don't want to buy games that have been worked on by this company. So there's your smoking gun. The Department of Homeland Security funding an organization that just fired the warning shot. The Gamergate 2 is coming, and we need to make sure that every gamer knows they have to buy the games worked on by Sweet Baby Incorporated, or else they're the bad guys. Am I taking crazy pills? You can't even blame the gamers this time. Nobody's it's even saying, like, if you if you don't want to play a game made by Sweet Baby Inc., like, it's kind of cringe, but, like, whatever. Just don't play the fucking game. Nobody gives a shit if you choose to buy a game or not, right? The issue here is that people are making a big deal about, you know, games going woke or whatever. It's like, oh, man, this game... What if that's the case? Why did they make such a big deal about the list? Why did they fucking... Like, this is the fundamental disconnect of, like, oh, well, you know, we don't really care about it that much. One of the people that works with Sweet Baby Inc., tried to get the list taken down which is significantly more cringe and worse than oh my god damn <laughs> features a, a black main protagonist or this this game features gay characters or this game features trans characters it's like does that really ruin the game for you we saw a perfect example of this last year with the infamous fucking yeah exactly it's like no one cares they tried to ban him on Steam. If no one cares, what did they try to fucking ban this guy? That's crazy. Pronouns meme. Fucking pronouns! Somebody got so ass mad about a game just having a pronoun selection option, okay? It's, it's fucking cringe. In no way, shape, or form do these things make a game bad. Now, I will say that sometimes you will have games that will try to pander to a specific section of the audience and they'll force this shit in in a way that, yeah, it does negatively impact the game. But I would go as far as to say 90% of all games that feature some kind of, you know, woke element within them, they're fine. They're, they're perfectly fine and it doesn't hurt the game at all. It's Homeland Security! Holy shit! Now, of course, we saw the old guard from the first Gamergate dust off their pitchforks. We saw Mark Kern, you know, the guy who worked at Blizzard there, Grums, on Twitter. Here in this interview with the quartering, he went on to explain that basically the way the games are getting... Yeah, also, you know, I've... Listen, some of chat have not liked my perspective on the, the thumb-looking pronoun man, okay? Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, shit! In fact, you could say that those people have been... You are coping, coping and seeding. You just can't accept what you're seeing. Yes, you're coping, coping... So hard. Coping, coping and Thoughts? Anyway. <laughs> so, look. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'm hijacked the soundboard. 
<clears throat> so I gave my take about the, the pronoun rant thing, okay? But I've always said, even from when I very first covered it, as much as I found it cringe and a bit retarded and soy and I didn't care that much about the pronoun option, right? The fact that people were like, who cares about the pronouns, which is what I thought was diminished somewhat because you had people who were removing mods that got rid of the pronoun option. If it's not a big deal and no one fucking cares about the pronoun shit, why do you need to take down mods to get rid of it? Who cares? Let the mods stay up. Let them take the pronoun away because it's not a big deal and you don't care, apparently. But you care enough that you need to force... Not Well, <laughs> that's not the way we're putting it, but like you, you're going to limit people's ability as much as you can to remove the pronouns. That's stupid. It doesn't make any sense. Like, if you... I think it's over overreacting to comment to get that mad about it but it's also f fine to remove it if you want to okay and the other thing that i will say is too to give credit to hill versus babyface he came across badly and looked like a fucking retard okay and i hate the fucking post hoc rationalization that's been done about it but i'll put that to one side and i will say that in what he said okay there were some aspects of talking about the current day california bullshit okay that I would say is is kind of relevant, okay? He doesn't deserve to be as smug as he's being, but I will say, and I will agree, that he is talking about the vibe or the feeling of stuff being a bit off in certain games, and I think that certainly, you know, has been demonstrated with some of the Sweet Baby Ink thing, okay? So there we go. There's a fucking... There's a, there's a peace offering to the Friday Night's Tights viewers, okay? There's a peace offering, all right? Friday Night's Tights viewers, we're back on track. ...being made is they're extremely expensive. Huge companies have to come up with the money, and one of the best ways to come up with the money is your CEFO can get you tax breaks based on working with companies that do this forced diversity stuff to make sure you can fund your game. And oh, by the way, you remember I mentioned... I mean, a lot of companies get a lot of tax breaks for a lot of different things. Uh, some companies, depending on like where the company is based, you might get a tax break based off of the fact that like if you do like a formal like a uh, sexual harassment training at your workplace, uh, if you get your, uh, you know, th th there's various different things that companies can do to get like these tax breaks. Like this is not some like nefarious thing or whatever. It's just... It's a pretty common thing in business uh, here in the United States. Elon Musk Wait. money is your CEFO can get you tax breaks based on working with companies that do this forced diversity stuff to make sure you can fund your game. And oh, by the way, you remember I mentioned- I mean, a lot of companies get a lot of tax breaks for a lot of different things. Uh, some companies, depending on like where Wait. the company is based, you might get- a <laughs> Well, companies get a lot of tax breaks. Yeah, but we're talking about these tax breaks. Because if a company gets a tax break, say, because they put diversity shit in, then that creates a, a potential conflict of interest where they're going to, um, you know, over the over the potential quality of something, they're going to put in place content that's going to fit that incentive. A tax break based off of the fact that, like, if you do, like, a formal, like, a sexual harassment training at your workplace, uh, if you get your, uh, you know, th th there's various different things that companies can do to get, like, these tax breaks, like... This is not some like nefarious thing or whatever. It's just, it's a pretty common thing in business uh, here in the United States. Elon Musk. Well, this is where Elon Musk signal boosted this by retweeting it simply by saying, wow. And this got it in front of 5.4. I don't know why so many people put so much stock in anything like Elon Musk has to say, especially after that insane interview where he looked like he was just like hyped up on some kind of like he was intoxicated in some way the whole time. Like, do you guys remember that interview where he wasn't speaking coherently, like in any way, shape or form? Why do people put so much stock in a guy who's clearly fucking insane? Black character or good game? You must choose one or the other. I don't get it. Million eyes. So we're off I mean, to I don't think that's what's being said, is it? Tweet. Then you got people like Matt Walsh chiming oh, in and say what you will about Matt Walsh. But this is one take of the breakdown of... He's Leo. citing Matt Walsh? Boogie, you're fucking citing Matt Walsh in your Gamergate 2 video? Am I in fucking clown world right now? Like, what the fuck is going on? Whoa, whoa. Yeah, Matt Walsh is someone... Matt Walsh is probably... Probably the biggest... Ch I think Matt Walsh has got like 3 million subs or something, right? I think that that's probably the biggest the biggest channel that's spoken about it. Wokeness, end quote, in gaming. Uh, but this also got signal boosted by Elon Musk. This time of to 17.8 million viewers. 
So there's now way more people involved. And Elon Musk says video games need to get rid of the woke BS. Getting lectured with tedious propaganda is not why people play games. Now for my opinions. I was around for the last Gamergate. Wait, hang on a sec. You're fucking citing Matt Walsh in your Gamergate 2 video? Am I in fucking clown world right now? Like, what the fuck is going on? Quote, wokeness, end quote, in gaming. Uh, but this also got signal boosted by Elon Musk. This time for 17.8 million viewers. Wait, <laughs> of course. Dude, is this, is tip, tip, okay, Tipster is a retard, okay? What Billy is pointing out is this has gotten enormous attention, okay? To the point where Matt Walsh, okay, who's got millions of subs on his own, and works for the Daily Wire, the biggest, probably the biggest alternative concern, alter, uh, bleh, bleh, bleh. the biggest alternative conservative outlet talked about it. And then Elon Musk, who earns one of the biggest social media platforms in the world, spoke about it too. So all Boogie is doing here is just saying, hey, look how big this is. And Tips is acting like that's crazy. What? No, he's just saying, look how big this got. So there's now way more people involved. And Elon Musk says video games need to get rid of the woke BS. Getting lectured with tedious propaganda is not why people play games. Now for my opinions. I was around for the last Gamergate. And if you guys remember, I was a bit of a notorious fence sitter during that period of time. I hated people being harassed online. I hated seeing people arguing online about this stuff. And I did feel like there was improvement the way that we as content creators and writers and gaming companies could do a better job of calling out corruption in the industry and improving the way that we reported video games. And I'll tell you where that got me. It got me utterly cucked by Anita Sarkeesian, chewed up by the left, and spit the fuck out. Is that what this is about? Is he still ass mad about Anita Sarkeesian being rude to him at, what was it, VidCon like five years ago or some shit like that? And keep in mind, look, I'm not the biggest fan of Anita Sarkeesian, okay? Like, I think some of her methods are a little bit questionable and stuff like that. I I'm not a big fan of Anita. And I do actually think that she was unnecessarily rude to Boogie at VidCon. But, like, is that what this is about? I need Anita to Sarkeesian was mean to you at VidCon, and now you want to side with, like, the worst people on the fucking internet and join Gamergate version 2.0? Oh, oh, what kind of fucking shit is this? I'm not gonna make that mistake again. I like most sane people, just like fun video games. Hey, uh, I don't care sub, if the protagonist. Thank you very much. Jane, so CCC joined the Kuma Nation. Thank you very much for the Twitch sub. I do appreciate it. Agonists or the supporting characters are short or tall, fat or skinny, black or white, gay or straight. I uh, big tits, small tits, negative tits, three dicks, ten dicks. I don't give a shit. I just play video games to have fun. I'm just here to have fun. Please make a fun video game. I also think diversity can be fun. It I mean, there are plenty of fun games out there that feature diversity. Starfield seemed like a pretty well received game. Lots of diversity in that game. Look I don't know about that, man. Starfield was like quite mixed response, I think, to that one. No? Yeah, Tipster getting subs while Chud isn't. True, guys! Come on, you're letting Tipster beat me. Tipster's gonna fucking outpace me intellectually at this rate. Come on now. Look at uh, what's the other one that everybody was going on about? Uh, oh man, I'm, I'm I'm having a brain fart. It's the one that everybody tells. Dude, also right. I, Starfield is not the same as other games as well. Like uh, as other uh, Bethesda games. When the Bethesda game comes out, it's like played for years to come and modded and stuff like that, right? And I just don't think Starfield is quite caught on in the same way. Tells me that I should play, and there's like tons of diversity in that game or whatever. Um, shit, I can't. Boulder's Gate 3, thank you, Emmy. Boulder's Gate 3, fantastic game. Lots of diversity in that game. So, like, having woke shit in a video game doesn't make it bad. Now, are there some examples where that shit gets forced in in a way that it just becomes pandering? Yeah, and that could ruin the experience. Hey, Creeman, because it was total ass. Do you know, it's funny because I remember us like talking about it in the Discord and stuff, and it's like I kind of mixed, I went backwards and forwards on it. Um, I know. I think I was like, at first I was like, oh, it's okay. And then I was like, it sucks. And then I was like, oh, maybe it's okay. And I played through it in the end. But after playing through it, I think I looked back on it and thought, you know, the story sucked. I think, you know, it's one of the, it's like any Bethesda game. You get into like upgrading your shit and upgrading the armor and getting better guns and that kind of thing. And the kind of loot goblin shit can be fun. That, that part of it I, I enjoyed. But beyond that, the gameplay was kind of mid. The story was shit. Um, 
the enemy the enemies were quite tanky at points. You, do you know what I mean? It's like the only the only thing I really enjoyed was the the fucking collecting shit, and that was it. <laughs> and then other than that, it was kind of a bit meh, you know. The problem with Starfield is you realize the progression is empty. Yeah. For sure. But the majority of games that have like, you know, wokeness in them, I'm going to get held over to. There's nothing wrong with them. They're perfectly enjoyable. You can still have a lot of fun playing them. This is just cringe. This is just really fucking lame. Have to take away or detract from the video game. Give me cool character creators with crazy shit in it. Give me wild main characters. Give me storylines of things I would never experience in my own life, and let me experience them. There are so many games that do that. Countless and countless examples of games that do exactly what you're saying right now, Boogie. And some of these people, like what? What options? <laughs> I think it's a cope to say it's countless. Like there are some games that are still fun. Okay. But uh, it's not anywhere near like it used to be. And again, I don't think that's just because of woke stuff. But it isn't. It is an. Inf there's something to be said about it at least, right? But you know, it used to be a game every week that you wanted to play. You know, I remember when I was younger, it was like you know. I mean, now. I mean, well, I think one element of it is like back in the olden days, you used to have to pick and choose what games you bought because you know you could only afford a certain amount or whatever, right? But now it's like, ugh. You know, does that make sense? You see what I mean? It's like, <laughs> what am I even trying to say right now, dude? What time is it? It's fucking 10, 10 to 9 at night. No, listen, it's not, listen, we don't need to watch any more of this. Look, this is not to say this ruins the game, okay? Like, I'm, I would still play this game. I've, I've not finished the first Spider Man game yet, let alone Miles Morales, okay? I'm not saying this is stopping you from playing the game. But what I'm saying is, this to me would seem likely to be an element of that sweet baby influence, right? Is that is that a crazy a crazy take? I think that's a pretty reasonable take. That you're now aligning yourself with would call those games fucking woke. Like, what are you doing right now, Boogie? The else's eyes, but it's got to be done well, and it's got to be done fun. When I look at the list of games, that it's sweet crazy. Baby worked on, is it? I don't find any of the. What the way that it's put in this there? You think that's crazy? Okay. Anyway, listen. Let's not agree to disagree, okay? Let's move, move forward. Well done, and we all know what we thought about Suicide Squad, which was just an abomination. I heard a lot of good things about Spider-Man 2. Uh, I didn't play it myself, but of the people that I know who did play it, they seem to have enjoyed it a lot. Like, I don't get it. I, I think the only people I've ever seen complain about a Spider-Man game, and it's always for, like, a stupid reason. Remember that yellow Flash guy who got really up in arms about Miles Morales not being Spider-Man because he's, like, a, a minority character? Do you remember that shit and how he got blown the fuck out for that? Those are the people. It is very similar to the example given in the presentation where you're talking about an ex and a dating sim and you're penalized for calling them a monster. You're aligning yourself with now, Boogie. Yeah. From the ground up. Yeah, listen, I'm not, again, I'm not saying it's completely destructive to it. I'm not saying it's the be all and end all of the game. It's just, I think that, you know, it could be, listen, it could be. That you're overstating, you know, you're, I'm over, I'm overstating it or something to to you, but I don't think I am. I'm just saying, yeah, it's a bit cringe. Probably is something to do with Sweet Baby Ink. Whilst there are definitely themes of Peter Parker not being able to please MJ, um, it does feel a bit, it does feel a little bit kind of forced in, shoehorned into that particular moment of the game. But in fairness, I haven't played it. Maybe when I play the whole thing at some point, I'll feel different. I personally think that curator list is a good. We all know what we thought about Suicide Squad, which was just an abomination. I heard a lot of good things about Spider-Man 2. Uh, I didn't play it myself, but of the people that I know who did play it, they seem to have enjoyed it a lot. Like, I don't get it. I, I think the only people I've ever seen complain about a Spider-Man game, and it's always for like a stupid reason. Remember that yellow Flash guy who got really up in arms about Miles Morales not being Spider-Man because he's like a, a minority character? Do you remember that shit and how you got blown the fuck out for that? Those are the people you're aligning yourself with now, Boogie. Oh, hang on a second. Hold the phone. I don't think people are saying that because Marvel Morales is a minority character. I think they're saying that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. And I think that it's a criticism of a concept in comics. What's it called where the, 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 the hero passes down to the next person? What's that called? There's a name for that, isn't there? Anyway, let's finish this for now.
from the ground up. I personally think that curator list is a good thing, and I'm going to use it to make informed decisions moving forward. And as it stands right now, because of the behavior of the people that work at that company, plus their track record of the games they've worked on, I'm not yeah, inclined I'm to buy to anything from Sweet Baby Incorporated. We'll finish this first, and I'll be going. White male uh, gamer uh, harasser monster? Then put me on the guillotine list. I'll sign up right first. I'm ready to go. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh my god. What the fuck? I've been ready to go since the first Gamergate. Put me, put me out of my misery. If you're around for the first Gamergate, you know the tools that you use, right? You've heard it all before. Everything is sexist. Everything is racist. Everything is harassment. Call it all out. Shoot everything down. He's gone all the way into the anti-woke grift at this point. Like he's basically just a chubbier version of the quartering. If you don't like it, it's bad and it must be taken away as long as you're somebody that works at Sweet Baby Incorporated. If you're a consumer like you or me and you want to have a fun video game, well, then you're the asshole. Oh, and don't forget, if you're a white male gamer, especially an older one like me, it doesn't matter how leftist you are. It doesn't matter how much you support diversity. It doesn't matter how good of an ally you are. You are dog shit on the bottom of these people's heels. Don't you ever forget it. If you choose... This is literally just about being treated poor. Yeah, it's, there's like this... There's this weird kind of like, um, you know, elitism about it, you know? Like this is academic elitism. You've read a couple of books. Levi Anidia Sarkeesian. Anyway. Uh, Sarkeesian at, at VidCon. That's what this is about. That's, do you guys remember what he said during, just, uh, is there a video of that somewhere? Let me see if I could find that. Because like, this is like the complete opposite of what he said on that panel. Okay, here we go. Wait, where's that? Let's mean? bring this up so we could Hang see on. what Boogie had to say back then. Panel was over, and the moderator said we had about five minutes if anybody had any closing statements. So I made a closing statement that it took about a minute to say. And I said that I wanted to remind everybody in the audience that I am a person of privilege as a white cis male. And then I. Oh my God, dude. No. Not the old videos. No. No. Somewhere. Let me see if I could find that. Because, like, this is like the complete opposite of what he said on that panel. Okay. Here we go. Let's bring this up so we could see what Boogie had to say back then. Panel was over, and the moderator said we had about five minutes if anybody had any... I mean... It was six years ago, and in the course of the video, is, is Boogie not saying, like, this shit happened, and he's thinking back differently about it now? Right? <laughs> to me, I'm like, yeah, people's opinions change quite a lot. I mean, look, I've got some fucking soy takes that I am completely 180 on now, but that's as a result of moving forward and changing my perspective and stuff like that. I mean, maybe you could argue that Boogie has taken the popular position because that's the kind of guy that he is. But, I mean, of course, you know, your, your opinion is going to change, particularly over a period of years. Closing statement. So I made a closing statement that it took about a minute to say. And I said that I wanted to remind everybody in the audience that I am a person of privilege as a white cis male. And then I w went over the types of attacks that have happened to me again with the assassins and, and the boxes of feces and, and, and all of that kind of stuff. And then just try to remind the audience that if, you know, whoever you are, if it can happen to me, it can happen to you. And then try to remind everybody that this isn't a matter of identity politics. This is a human rights issue that I think these types of attacks are human rights violations Oof, and that we should rough. all consider that so that we can be unified against them. A couple more panels. So he was speaking out against like gamer gators at the time, right? And now he's decided he wants to join them. To buy their shitty games, then you are the enemy. And if you inform other people about sec. what games they've worked on, you might very well find your Steam account gone when you wake up in the morning. That's who you're up against. And I think it should be abundantly clear this is not another harassment campaign. And you or nobody should be harassing anybody. We've shown in this video that if you give these people enough time and enough time to speak, and a platform to do it on, they'll self-destruct on their own. You don't have to do anything but wait. Though I do recommend, if you're somebody who works for their money and has it in their pocket and only wants to spend it on fun video games instead of the games that these people have made, well, I think... Realistically, Chud just likes saving content for when he's got nothing to talk about. Um, I mean, you know, listen, I've got to be honest with you guys, okay? It is... Like, it's, oh. Guys, it's so hard. It's so hard, guys. It's so tough. I didn't know how tough I got it. <laughs> guys, it's so tough. Like, you wouldn't believe. Yeah, exactly. There was, I think there was a period of time that I went through when I was a bit too rapid with stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like, you've got to recognize filling eight hours of content a day, five days a week, is quite a lot of stuff to say. Do you know what I mean? 
So you do have to pace it out a bit, because otherwise you just fucking splurge through it, and then you've got nothing to talk about, like, in the days after. Like, the stuff I've got lined up that I haven't even got to today, because I've got sidetracked. We had fucking Nicholas come on, Willie Mac come on, so it's kind of going off on different angles and stuff, you know? Easy, Asan. Oh, my social batteries, though. I'm actually streaming longer than normal today, so hopefully you're appreciating it. Don't rush. Okay, in the bedroom. <laughs> Dude, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Chud is live. A ridiculous percentage of waking... Oh, waking hours. Okay. I thought you said wanking hours. I think that's probably the right thing to do as well. Even though they'll probably still call that harassment. At the end of the day, I set the last one out. And uh, I felt like I was on the wrong side of history there. And uh, it certainly didn't serve me well. So gamers... You thought you were on the wrong side of history last time? Oh, shit! Oh, shit! Oh, do you know the people who were associated with Gamergate the last time around? They weren't good people. Anybody who knows me in my audience knows that I do not overuse terms like, you know, racists and Nazis and, you know, uh, misogynistic shit like that. I think that there's a lot of people in the online left who do overuse a lot of those types of terms. But like these were literally the kind of people who were associated with Gamergate. You talk all this stuff over the years about how much harassment you've gotten, uh, how you've been swatted, how you've been doxxed and all these horrible fucking things that have happened to you. And now you've decided that that's the kind of people you want to align yourself with? The kind of people that would do that kind of shit to the targets of the previous Gamergate? You want to align? Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting distracted, okay? I'm getting distracted. I've got a little side eye going on, okay? I've got a little bit of side eye. Turkey Tom's licking his wounds. Uh-oh. One of Katie's friends on Destiny stream right now trying to explain how tickling is sexual assault. Wait, apparently this dude was some degenerate troll or something. Lamal, what is going on? <laughs> it, ha it does happen. It does happen. It fucking sucks. I've I've had it before on a much smaller scale where like, you know, you fucking someone's saying something in chat and you're like, fuck you. You bring them on and they're like, yeah, I'm just a troll. Fuck you. And you're like, oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> oh, it's rough. <laughs> It's rough. It is rough. Rough situation all round. Discord or ban? Yeah, Discord or ban. I don't don't do that shit anymore. It's it's fun. I think when you're a smaller creator, it could be fun to generate a bit of buzz and and stuff, right? But um, as you get bigger, like the more potential there is for people to just be fucking with you, and you bring them on, and it's just like they just like say, ah, fuck you. The funniest one of all is, do you remember? When I brought someone on and they started playing gay porn or something, or did they send me a YouTube video? Maybe I can't remember. There was, I think both happened. One time a guy got his dick out, but I think he was off screen. Okay. And then the other time was a guy sent me a YouTube video to play and I started playing it and it was a normal music video. And then it, and then it switched to this guy, just like this big guy with a big black dick, just jerking off. And it was like, Whoa. It was an absolute banger. It was an absolute cracker. Much respect to the trolls. Find yourself with those kinds of people now, Boogie. You think that that's the right side of history? Okay, buddy. Uh, oh, I wait. Yeah, true. Wait. Turkey Tom said it was a degenerate troll, did he? Degenerate troll. Oh, sounds like Turkey Tom needs a little song. You are coping, coping and seeding. Yeah. You just can't. <laughs> the truth it is calling and now you are mulling and coping coping so hard coping and seething i've been granted a do over here yeah. wasn't one of the people okay one of the people that was a big name in gamergate the first time around was ethan ralph hasn't ethan ralph like harassed you numerous times over the years and now you want to be seen with the likes of people like him boogie dude what? dude this is the ultimate sides cucked shit from tipster it is unreal the level of sides cuckery that he's engaging in right now why on earth are you, dude, he just doesn't understand what he's talking about, does he? He just got no clue what this dude is on about, where, what he's on about, where he's talking about Ethan Ralph in the context of this. 
Ethan Ralph is a content brain guy. He's gone off and done his own thing now. Ethan Ralph is totally irrelevant to this conversation, okay? I don't even know if Ethan Ralph has weighed in on the latest controversy. Like, siding and, and agreeing with criticism of Sweet Baby Inc. is not siding with Ethan Ralph. I don't even think he's part of the conversation. God, these people are so insufferable with their sides cuckery, man. What are you doing? Why Homeland Security has decided that they are going to give me a chance to write this particular ship, and I'm going to take it. And I'm going to make sure that I'm on the right side of fun video games and fun, well-written diversity and nowhere else. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I will speak with you again soon. You know, I just realized my career outlasted Anita Sarkeesian's by quite a bit. Hmm. Maybe I won that after all. Jeez. Anyway. Uh, so that's the video that kind of Chill, like sparked like this conversation that happened on Twitter in regards to uh, Boogie's interesting take on all of this. So uh, let's go ahead and let's take a look at some of the responses because the Oh my God, dude. Tips is a Xanderholic, guys. Tipster is a Xanderholic, people. Uh-oh. Especially like the tweet where he announced the video was the stupid one. Hot take video games are supposed to be fun, not lecturing uh, lectures about uh, being white, uh, being how, how being a white man is bad. And so a lot of people started asking, uh, where's the games that do that? Xander Hall chimed in, name one mainstream game that lectures you on why white people are bad. We have the Surf's TV asking pretty much the same question. Which video games lecture you? Oh, my God. Man. The Surf's. <laughs> the thing is, right. I know, dude, this sounds just so annoying, man. God, I don't know, dude, I honestly, I think that I hate lefties more than I hate Nazis at this point. I just, I think I'm there. I think I'm just in that brain space. The smug condescension is so unbearable. At least Nazis are funny sometimes. Now, what I was going to say is, you know, Lance from the Surfs. God, I do, you know, I do sometimes think of having like a conversation or having a friendly moment with like some of these people and you do kind of miss it a bit. You're like, oh, okay, you know, shame that things turned out the way they did and stuff like that. But then you think about like what you'd have to be signing on for in order to still be friends with these people, because you cannot be friends with these people. If you've got the wrong politics, it's impossible. You just can't. Okay. They're constantly fucking hovering, waiting to dunk on a chud. And if you demonstrate any signs, you're a chud, that's it. You know, you just can't be friends with them. There's, in fact, there's an old video on this on the second channel that talks about how you can't be friends with lefties because they just fucking backstab you in a moment's notice, you know? Now, listen, I've got a... I am, I am you know, I am neutral. Me and the Groupers, I'd say, are probably neutral. They probably don't like my takes on some of the Jew stuff, but uh, we're quite neutral, I'd say. Um, you know, if, if I feel it's appropriate to, like, offer a defence because people normally shit on them or will do, and I think they appreciate that. They like, by the way, I heard on the grapevine, apparently they like my coverage of the Hunter Avalone situation. They thought that was good. But yeah. I, you know, I, I just, I probably, maybe I'd be biased a different way on it in, in a different situation, but it's just so insufferable the way these people act. We all have common ground on homosexuality. The Avalon arc was the Avalon arc. Is it to guys? Come on, it was too much. It was gratuitous. <laughs> I, got, I got a bit carried, guys. I got a bit carried away. All right, let's put it that way. I got a little bit too carried away. Okay, looking back on it. All right. <laughs> but to be fair, how many times in your career are you going to have um, an expose of someone seeking out? A six man all black, no turn downs, piss gang bang orgy. You just it never it's never gonna that I'm probably I am never okay, this is probably fairer. It was it gratuitous, yes. But it's probably the only time that would have happened to make that level of content about it. I do not think I'm ever gonna get that opportunity again. So I made hay while the sun shined, okay? And I think that's probably fairer. About being a white man being bad. We have this person, Mighty Keith. This is 100% a genuine question from me. What video game does this? Okay. Even I chimed in to ask the question. I'd be interested in knowing 
Which video games lecture players on how being a white man is bad? Can you suggest any, Boogie? Because I haven't seen any. Boogie decided to respond to a lot of these questions by stating stuff like this. Jesus Christ, is it really this easy to upset that beehive? Me, I am a white man and I like video games. The internet, that's not what you said. You made a ridiculous fucking claim about how video games are lecturing white men about how they're bad, right? And then when people ask you, can you show us an example of a game that does that? You couldn't give us one. He then goes on to cope even more it's wild getting called alt-right at the moment because I said video games shouldn't shame white men. I literally voted Democrat since I was able to vote, donated yearly to the human rights campaign, raised money for trans charities, helped uh, start up a game store that was an LGBTQ plus safe zone in Arkansas, was in an interracial relation. Oh my God, this last one's gotta be the funniest one. Was in an inter interracial relationship in the South in the 80s and 90s and got my ass beat for simply loving a black woman. My only offense is being a white man who likes video games and I got lit the fuck up by these people. Like he's going down like the checklist about like, hey, I can't be a horrible person because I've done all of these things that make me not a horrible person. Yeah, exactly. Trans girl Jade. He literally, uh, I have a black friend. He's literally, I have a black friend in us. Yeah, that's literally it, right? Jeez. Sorry, one sec. Sorry, 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 sorry. I got distracted. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's while getting called alt right at the moment because I said video games shouldn't shame white men. I literally voted Democrat when I was able to vote. Donated yearly to the Human Rights Campaign, raised money for trans charities, helped. Oh, good. This is. I missed this bit. Early. I didn't see this bit. I only saw the main responses. Oh, dude. Oh my god, that really so annoying. <laughs> dude, I wish I'd seen this earlier when I covered it. The black friending us. Yeah, that's literally it, right? Jeez. Uh, somebody else quote tweeted him saying, uh, motherfuckers really try to throw stones and hide their hands. Yeah, true. Then we have this. What is this? This fuzzy person says, yeah, this is a what? point, uh, though. I think there are plenty of people who would still crap on him. Uh, but to start a few examples would go a long ways. Uh, basically asking for more examples of games like that. Whether I make a list of video games with forced diversity and bullshit or not, it doesn't change the simple fact that video games are supposed to be fun, not lectures. Again, not giving oh, any examples oh, and refusing to give any because he knows it's he's full of shit. Like you might find some obscure indie game who, that does something like that, but I guarantee you, you will not find a mainstream title who does that because let's be real. Okay. Let's, let's, let's not make this a woke thing or whatever. Let's just be real for a second. Video game companies make games to make money. Why would they try and alienate intentionally alienate a portion of their audience to make money? It's, it's, it's not going to work. Okay. But then you're only looking at one factor of this, which is if the alienation, let, let's say there's a benefit that can be obtained from putting it in there, but the cost is the alienation of the audience, but the benefit that you're going to obtain is greater than what it might be to alienate whatever audience is going to be pissed off with it, then you're going to do that, aren't you? So, and you know, I, again, I, to be honest with you, God, it's so... I need to look into the fucking BlackRock shit, man. I really do. I need to find out how much fucking truth there is to it because I've seen the clip of the investor talking about it. But, you know, I'm like, is that like the genuine perspective of these people? Like, how deep rooted is it? And I'm worried that what I might find at the end of that road would also be an explanation for why Professor Finkelstein wanted to kick those, those, <laughs> those minorities out of the flat above him, you know? the J boys hopping off the porch, so to speak. Let's put it that way. Dem boy, <laughs> dem boys. Work. If you insult a portion of their audience, your audience, they're not going to buy the game and they're not going to play it. All right. So again, you might find some little niche indie game that does something like that, but you're never going to find a mainstream title. that does oh, that. Shit. It's oh, counterproductive shit. to their end goal, which is making money. There are a lot of white men who play video games. Okay. They're not going to alienate that crowd. Jake, I think video games are supposed to be fun and not lectures about uh, much of anything, really. The fact you are having trouble agreeing with that is wild to me. It, it, it's not so much that, it's that you've chosen to- Oh, look, it's actually, it's uh, actual Jake. Hey, it's the corn guy. Hey, it's the corn guy. Hey, it's corn guy. <laughs> One thing that's funny about the corn guy, he, to this day, continues to have like little backwards and forwards with, um, who is it? Who's that guy debated? Lord of Patriarchy. Oh my God, classic. He continues to like engage with them, which I think is pretty fun.
and I saw that he was fighting with uh, who was it, uh, Mister Dapperton. Oh man, Mister Dap. Do you know me and Mister Dapperton are chill? Me and Mister Dapperton are pretty chill. To align yourself with genuinely horrible people, Boogie, do you not realize the kind of people? Don't get sucked into the JQ shit. Right, guys. So I've been looking into BlackRock, okay, and uh, I've actually discovered quite a lot. And in order to educate you all as well, we're going to be watching a double feature today. The first thing we're going to be watching is The Greatest Story Never Told, which tells the truth about a certain Austrian politician. And then we're going to be watching Europa, which talks about how they are taking over the fucking European nation. It's going to be great. Let's get into it, okay? Well, who you're aligning yourself with at the moment? They're not good people. I actually chimed in on this because I, I thought the comments he made, especially in his video, were fucking insane. This is what I had to say. Boogie 2988 becoming the quartering ripoff wasn't on my 2024 bingo card, but it should have been. He's but no, there's a troll skeptical. Apparently the conversation was just a troll and they were just trolling. From what I understand, it wasn't a genuine conversation. He's lost a lot of relevancy in recent years, and his bank account is looking rather empty these days. And being the lovable Mr. Rogers character of the internet wasn't working anymore because people got a chance to see behind the curtain. I wrote current. I meant curtain. God damn it. Don't That's you hate that when you see, like, a tweet that you made, and it's, like, beyond the, like, time frame where you could edit it? God damn it. Fucking typo. Anyway. <laughs> People got a chance to see behind the curtain and get a good look at what the- Sorry, spoilers, spoilers. I've only, that's, I've just only heard, dude, crypto has gone down. No, my Shiba Inu coin. No. Oh, fuck. We're in the bear market now. No boogie is like, and surprise, surprise, they didn't like it. Anyway. Not to mention the fact that- the I was going to say, oh, that's what I've heard. Well, Turkey Thomas tweeted out and said he got trolled. Anti-woke grift is extremely profitable. And I can imagine- By the way, for those of you who don't realize- the reason I'm doing that is because that's a sound that's a that's a soundboard thing that uh, Tipster's got, and he did it earlier, and I thought it was insane to have because the point of a soundboard is a quick, snappy thing, and it, that whole thing is just the soundboard. <laughs> And folks like the quartering and Melanie Mack rake in mountains of cash on that grift looks rather appealing to a has-been with a career on life support whose only current claim to fame is being the co-host of a podcast hosted by Keemstar where you are literally there just for the purpose of being mocked by everyone on the internet for being a lol pal. But hey, anything for a quick buck and a taste of cloud, eh, Boogie? Even if it means siding with some of the worst people on the internet, glad to know that all uh, the kind words and encouraging messages you've tried to deliver in your videos in the past didn't mean shit, and that it was all just a facade to try and convince everyone that you're somehow the good guy of the internet. I hope for your sake that grift wor was worth it, Boogie. Jeez. Okay. Right. I think, okay, well, there's nothing wrong with reading your own tweets, okay? There's nothing wrong with reading your own tweets and being like, oh, hey, look, I tweeted this out. I thought it was kind of funny. Look at this. Boom. Okay? I think that's fine to do, right? But there's something in particular about him reading out his verbose takedown of Boogie in this way. It's almost like you're doing it because you want to go with it. You probably want to just stand up. Well said. Well said, hipster. That is spot on, mate. That is literally ideal. It's too smug. Yeah, exactly. Jeez. Somebody actually asked Boogie what his thoughts were on my comments. He says, if I pissed... Okay, guys. You're getting... <laughs> they, were, they were troll. They were trolling. Dude, that is actually, dude, that's actually, oh no, that's actually a negative detriment to the whole thing. So people are going to point to it and go, oh, look, they got trolled by this fucking guy. That's rough. That is rough. Dude, if someone is coming on and saying they fabricated the story completely, I mean, come on, man, that's obviously a bit much, isn't it? Stuff tipster. It's a good litmus test. I'm on the right track. Really? I then proceeded to quote tweet him by saying, I'd rather be me than pander to all writers like you. Anyway, come on, let me just get through this and then I'm finished Jeez. for the day. Somebody actually asked Boogie what his thoughts were on my comments. He says, if I pissed off tipster. It was more played out than that. Okay, fair enough. 
It's a good litmus test. I'm on the right track. Really? I then proceeded to quote tweet him by saying, I'd rather be me than pander to alt writers like you are. Using libs of TikTok as a source, the person who literally caused a children's hospital to receive bomb threats over her bigoted posts? Yikes, Boogie, you've lost the plot. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. He literally cited, when somebody was asking him for evidence of the claims that he was making, he literally cited libs of fucking TikTok, chat. So what? Is the clip right or not? Like, what do, you, what do you mean? What does it matter? Look at it yourself and figure it out, no? Does it matter who posted it, really? Is that really that big a deal that Libs, Libs of TikTok posted it? Just watch it and go, okay, well, no, this is wrong for every reason. I mean, oh, wait, it says rate, it says rate com proposed community notes. So that means it's not been confirmed yet, right? Okay. I mean, that video was insane. We watched it. Is that the one? Yeah, Danny Londers. That's the one we watched earlier. That video was fucking nuts, wasn't it? He then says, before I hop off Twitter for a while, I have pissed off a lot of people of color and uh, the LGBTQ folks in the past 24 hours. Know that I still love you and will always fight for you when I can, but it won't change my opinion that video games are meant to be fun and not lectures. I am not sorry about that. Boogie. Boogie. You're telling people of color and like, you know, LGBTQ plus folks that you love them and you support them while you align yourself with people who are outraged by their existence. While you align yourself with people who are mad that black characters exist in video games or gay characters exist in video games. Who? Okay. Beyond a complete full blown fucking fascist. I mean, to be honest with you, even a fascist would probably like the fact that black characters exist in video games, presuming that they can, you know, But, in all seriousness, who is, like, completely against black characters at all in a video game? Like, I... I <laughs> it just, it's such a bastardization and straw man of what the point is. I don't think anyone is sat there like, no blacks at all. God, these people don't even understand what the arguments are. It's so frustrating to listen to someone. You know, put it in this way or trans characters exist in video games that there are pronoun selection options in video games Fucking pronouns. how can you tell these people oh, that you oh, love shit. them and you support them while also supporting these people it doesn't make sense boogie oh i was being petty here but you know oh no he's gonna play this dude this is dude. It, it, it. There's something so cringe about this. Doing your own three. Oh, <laughs> dude. Is this clip going to make sense to you? Of The Office. There's a clip There's a clip in The Office of uh, basically David Brent, Michael Scott equivalent for the UK edition, has left out a paper magazine and he's on it, right? And the idea of it is he's trying to casually show off that it was in the magazine without making it obvious. So it's very clearly on the desk in front of this guy. And David Brent goes, oh, that in your way, is it? Oh, sorry about that. Just uh, me on the cover of Inside Paper there. Um, oh, you look quite young there. And and what is that? The date's four years ago. Uh, yeah, I've been meaning to throw it away, actually. And then he just fucking gently puts it on top of the bin. The point, you just know what I mean? This is what this reminds me of. You know, he pulls it up and he goes, oh, oh, this thing, oh, this. I'm just being a bit petty here. Clearly he wants to show it to his audience because he thinks it, it fucking slaps. And he's like, yeah, this was so based. I took him down so good here. Check this out. But he's trying to do it in a way that makes out like he's just, oh, 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 this, this old, this old thing. Oh, come on now. While also supporting these people. It doesn't make sense, Boogie. Oh, I was being petty here, but you know what? Fuck it. I'll include this too. Hey, guys. Oh, it's just bit, dude.
Oh, I was just being petty, but you know what? I'll put it in there. It's me, so Francis. insufferable, man. And you know, last time this Gamergate thing happened all those years ago, I feel like I was on the wrong side of history. I was just kind of a, a bit of a fence sitter last time. And so this time, I want to make sure I'm on the right side of history. You know, last time that big meanie Anita Sarkeesian was so mean to me at VidCon, and I didn't <laughs> like that very much. So this time, I'm going to side with all the racists and the Nazis and stuff like that, because they seem to think I'm a really cool guy and they seem to be on the right side of this thing this time and like i said i want to be on the right side of history uh, this time around you know there was that infamous stream clip of me saying that you know at least you know racists and nazis they stand by what they believe in and you know i'm gonna stand by them this time because that big bad anina sarkeesian was so mean to me at vidcon how dare her <laughs> oh my god <sighs> jesus you know what clip i'm talking about by the way do you guys know this infamous clip where Boogie was talking about like how at least Nazis uh, stand by what they believe in or whatever? Can I find this? Here's the clip. I could not believe this even back then when he said it. Look at this shit, chat. I'm going to say as much shit and do as much shit as I can to keep your attention so you don't do it to somebody else. I'm here for you to torture me and only me. I'm going to make a living letting you torture me. Oh I'm going to be the next Dark Side Phil. I'm going to be the next Wings of Redemption. I'm going to spend every day online to keep you fucking busy so you don't do it to somebody else. That's going to so cringe. Bring That's going to cringe. But I want you to know, I think you are the lowest of the low. I think you are the worst of the worst. I think that there are fucking rapists and Nazis out there who, even though they are rapists and fucking Nazis, they are more redeemable than you because at least they're doing something they fucking believe in. They may be pieces of garbage. They may be pieces of shit. They may harm other people, but at least they believe what they fucking stand for. You stand for nothing. I still can't believe he fucking said that. That is fucking insane. Is it really that insane? He's talking about detractors. Someone that boot Listen, he's talking about he's talking to his Nicholas Diorio's tipster, okay? He's talking to his Nicholas Diorios. Think about when Nicholas Diorio is relentlessly coming for you, like a rapist in the night, and you can't stop him no matter what you do, okay? That's how you're going to feel about Nicholas Diorio one day. The tipster A-log, or as he calls it, being a tipstorian. Don't this, wait a second. They say the same thing about Thingy, don't they? What's it? Dude, you're going to find out just how right he is by the a thousandth... By the a thousandth fucking stream that he's done about you. Yeah, exactly. He's playing on the Christorian thing, precisely. Exactly. Oh, God. Uh, and you guys may have noticed on one of my previous tweets uh, where I quote tweeted him, actually a couple of my previous tweets where I quote tweeted him, that you couldn't see oh, the shit. tweet I was oh, quote tweeting. Shit. Obviously, I showed it to you guys before showing you my quote tweet, but you couldn't see the original tweet I was quote tweeting, uh, you know, when I was showing my quote tweet, right? That's because Boogie couldn't handle my criticism. He couldn't handle... Oh my god, dude. When you're a pathetic wretch like Tipster that blocks in a heartbeat, I do not think you get to flex like this about getting blocked. That is insane. Handle the fact that I'm right. You're aligning yourself with really fucked up people, Boogie. And as a result of that, people are shitting all over you on Twitter right now. So if this is the road you want to go down, if you want to be, uh, you know, an even bigger version of the quartering, like... Go right ahead, okay? You do you. Uh, I hope the grift is worth it. You know, maybe it'll make you relevant again. Maybe it'll boost your career again. Uh, I'm not really sure, but I hope for your sake it works out because, god damn, I, I don't know what you're thinking right now, Boogie, but this is fucking insanity. Please. Daddy tip. Okay. I cannot let myself get overtaken by the by the by the tips to hate, by the tip hate. That doesn't that doesn't work. I can't do it. I just can't do it, guys. Oh, God, listen, it's tough to admit when your mind's changed quite. No, let's look. 
I do. Okay, I do think, like for the size that he is, excuse the pun, it is it is a kind of an absurd amount of attention he gets paid. Okay, I don't think I still believe that, and I think that people do sort of look at maybe a time where he does have a bit of good luck, and they act like he is a complete fail. That being said, it is fun. I can't deny that. I think if you understand it, not as people do it because tipsters important to talk about but he's just a very fun person to kind of like watch the content i would get mad at okay that i can understand that i get all right okay yeah you get me you with me the tippy dippy we're doing a tippy dippy that was fun <laughs>